is the software doing its thing? The software looks like it's doing a thing. Is that is that fair? Is it actually happening? I don't know. It seems like it's happening. I'm not sure. <laughs> Good old roll. Hello, how you doing? You're the first one here. <laughs> right on. I don't have anything planned, you know what I mean? I'm just here hanging, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, you know, if you need to go, Kenny, to actual sleep, you know, you don't need to, you know, do what you need to do, man, but I'm glad you're here, you know. Hang for for the period that you can, you know, before you drift off. Or, you know, just hang until you drift off, right, you know. <laughs> Oi, hi, man. So it's been a long starting last night, and uh, I don't mind telling you I'm a little tired, but... Uh, I'm also kind of a little, it went well last yesterday, at least I think it went well yesterday, or last night, or early this morning, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, yeah, and I think this is, I mentioned on the other streams, I don't know if you guys were around for last night at all, um, but uh, I think, because I feel okay about this now, I, I said last night, I think, I think I'm going to try and do this monthly, to do, you know, kind of this multi-time zone, you know one long day of you know multiple streaming episodes or streaming sessions or something like that um yeah we'll see how that goes at least that's my gonna be my idea i think once a month will be good um but we'll see how that goes as as future comes yeah <clears throat> anybody have any questions you know i don't have an agenda so i'm just gonna you know random moose burns hey how you doing man good to see you again uh, yes, I did get some sleep. Much needed, because I'm, I'm a bit tired still, um, you know. But hey, you know, it's worth it. So uh, I had a good time last night, and I think I'll have a good time this morning. Um, Space Cowboy, yeah, you're back again. <laughs> Welcome. I had the feeling that, uh, that, that, that at least in the, the, the early group of the hardcore people who are revealing themselves already. <laughs> How about you guys? Random Moose and Space Cowboy, uh, or anybody else? I mean, you know, uh, how how was your night's sleep and and the like? And um, yeah, I guess there you go. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, growing the beard, let's see. Um, okay, so I'm 58, so my sister is 53. I started growing it on the day of her 40th birthday, so I guess it's 13 years old. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it seems like, it's, it seems like I've had it longer than that. Did I just do the math wrong in that? I'm 58. She's... I'm 58, so she's 55, so it's 15 years old. Yeah, okay. What did I say? Did I say 15? <laughs> My brain is just a little doink to doink doink. <clears throat> well, it's good to know you got some good sleep, random moose brains. That's good. Glad you too, Space Cowboy. It's good to know you're good and rested for whatever it is that uh, y'all need to do for... A Sunday. Um, do I think calculus? Oh, hi, Kenny. Uh, do I think calculus is more pr practice or memorization? Struggling with it. calculus. I'm going to be an electrical engineer. Uh, yeah, you need calculus, buddy. That's that's a sure thing. Um, okay, you don't want to do uh, memorization, really. I mean, there's some things you're going to have to memorize, you know, just because that's the you know. Um, yeah, there's some things that, gonna, that you're just going to have to memorize. Um, but it's really, it's better a practice and also making sure you comprehend, you know, the, the principles under, that are underlying, you know. 
um, if you don't mind my poking my nose at where whereabouts are you in the calculus sequence are you like doing differential calculus are you up in the integral calculus or you know where where, where are you at with that um, just just being nosy um, sweet toasty had a good night's sleep good 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 TIA, man, I'm jealous of the English tea, man. I don't have any. Actually, I'm out of any actual proper tea. I have like peppermint and ginger, and I'm out of anything otherwise. Um, yeah, so haven't had any tea in a couple of days. Got to run down to the store and grab it, I guess. Um, So I guess I'm leaving a lot of dead air, but my, I'm feeling, okay, here we go. Not differential yet taking it. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, depends on what, ah, see, there's a tough thing. Um, when I took calculus, calculus three would have been the end because the school I did, um, okay, here in the US, usually what it is, the calculus sequence, depending on the school you go to, it's, uh, a lot of times it's like a, um, a four semester course or, you know, series of courses, but the school I took it in broke it into three semesters. Um, so instead of being four, three unit courses, they did the first uh, semester is five units and the second semester is four units. And then the last semester is three units, I guess. So that, that's where you get your 12 units. Um, they did that because it lined up better with a quarter school that was uh, UC San Diego, which, you know, because I was living in San Diego at the time. Um, so the thing is, you're, you're in there pretty far now, right? So you're, you know, you're doing some stuff. Um, I mean, I guess the thing is, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're comfortable with the concepts, then really what it comes down to is just doing it, right? You know what I mean? And especially because since you're going to be doing engineering, see, I didn't go into applied. I was, I went into pure math. So, um, you know, after I got through the course, I uh, well, that's, I did take a course in uh, complex variables, uh, which was kind of an applied class. Um, but yeah, so I didn't focus on a lot of uh, applied, but see, you're going to need to know it well, not just for getting a grade in the class, but it's going to be, you know, foundational for what you're going to need, to, especially when you start taking those, you know, uh, physics courses. And I remember I tutored people in the math department at San Francisco State who were from the physics department. Um, because you guys do a lot of math over there, you know, electrical engineering and physics and all that stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the better you and the more confident you are about it, the better it's going to be for you, man. That's all I can say. But, you know, um, if you can, get a good tutor, you know. I mean, I mean, tutor from the, the U.S. standpoint, right, where you, it's a person that just sort of individually helps you out um, rather than an official tutor or something like that. That's, you know, f you know like a, a leading your courses or something like that. Um, so, Celestian Kuba... Greetings from Poland, far out, man. There you go. Greetings back to you from California. Glad you're here, man. Rory Martin, aloha. Aloha, yeah, okay, aloha back to you. Okay, and the, the show and tell elephant vid, right on. That's a, I like the elephants, you know that though. <laughs> Okay, so can you three calculus courses and then different educations in their algebra for the main calculus courses? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, right. So, well, you know, I wish you uh, success with that, man. I was going to say good luck, but it's not really luck, is it, man? You know, I mean, you just, you just need to, to get it and get it in your head and, yeah. And I, I'm not sure what else to say other than that, but I mean, there you go, you know. You will succeed, I shall will it into existence. <laughs> okay, so here we go. He's saying generally let that instead of folks. Yeah, you know, that's that's good. I'm glad that you, you that you've come to that. That's fantastic. Um, 
see, since you've made that kind of click in your head, I, that bodes well for you, to be honest, man. Honestly, it does. So, you know, again, here we go. Let's get more in the camera there so I can check it out. There we go. Hey. <laughs> So we have 14 people. It's about the same as we had last night, I think. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of... You know, everyone's still thinking on the calculus thing. I think I should get my head back into actually, you know, not just talking about math in some superficial manner because I used to study it, but actually kind of dust off some of the old math texts and get my head into it, you know what I mean, just for, I mean, not that I'm going to do anything serious with it, like, you know, whatever, but just it, it, math is a beautiful thing. It's good for human brains, I think, you know. I would like to see everybody literate to, I'd like to see everybody uh, math literate to uh, at least first semester calculus, you know what I mean? Just so you could see, the, and I would like to see everybody like basic first semester Newtonian mechanics, you know what I mean? Just so you can kind of get an idea of physically what's going on, right? You know, um, I mean, I'm not going to get into some boastful thing about, oh, reality and this and that, but it, it gives us insight as to, you know, just kind of how things work, you know? If for nothing else, you can throw a rock up and it comes back down, right? And you can talk about, you know, acceleration and that kind of thing. And it's, I don't know, I think there's value to it. I think it's good for human brains. You know, but there's me. But I also think arts should be heavily funded, you know. Um, so I believe in the liberal arts education kind of thing, you know. You should be well read. You should understand a certain amount of philosophy uh, and cultural stuff like anthropology and even world religions and art history and uh, maybe even practicing a little art, you know, you know doing some stuff, you know, that you, where you actually do your own creative work. Uh, all that kind of stuff, right? I think, I think it's a good and valuable thing for humans to know these things. Anyway. And you're welcome, Kenny, of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wanneth, Wayne Thaff. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm always messing people's names up. So it looks like either Wayne Faff or Wanna Faff or something. I don't know. I'm sorry about that if I just keep messing people's names up and I can't remember what's what. <laughs> it's just You'll just have to keep showing up like a lot so that I'll just, you know, eventually get it into my head, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, here, I got some. Yeah, I keep, every time I look in here in, in the, into the camera and I see how weirdly crooked these glasses are, it drives me nuts, you know what I mean? I guess it's, you know, you guys find it amusing, and it is amusing, I guess, but I don't know what it is. It's just, I'm going to see if I can bend this a little better without freaking it up, you know? Let's see where I land it at. Yeah, it's a little better. It's still kind of tilty, but, you know, I don't think it'll last. I think I've kind of warped these things, you know? But, you know, they're just cheap over-the-counter reading glasses, you know, that, but... My actual proper, I think I've said this before, but I'll just say it again for, you know, to have some content for the moment. Um, I might as well get them out here, don't you know me? And these are the only glasses I have that actually I keep in an actual proper case because they're whatever, but they're actual prescription. But I have bifocals, which, uh, you know, it's what I could get through insurance or whatever. But, um, so the regular distance bit, is okay if I'm there okay it's actually pretty good but this is inconveniently distance from the computer you know what I mean and if I get closer I'm not doing this for the bifocal to work that's ridiculous um, anyway so these which, you know which I've had for a real long time um, but they're a good you know the focal length and everything is uh, you know Oh, from Utrecht. Hello, hello, hello. Greetings to you too, man. And, um, hmm, Sandrine, I'm not sure I recognize the name. Have you been here before? Because you know that I've spent some time in Utrecht a couple of different times. 
living over on Predacare and Strat. Um, I don't really remember very many street names over there, but, but um, I really like the Netherlands a lot. Reclaimer Rob, good morning to you too. Anybody have any interesting things to say about their local weather or any such thing that they, you know, they might I might, you know, be able to ramble on about for, you know, having some something to say. <laughs> mm. I think in the future I'm going to have to come up with some uh, I don't know, some notes or something that I could, you know, just so that when these kind of weird moments happen where I haven't anything off the top of my head to talk about that uh, might be useful, you know, I don't know, yeah, stormy, okay, uncomfortably stormy, or just kind of that pleasant, ooh, you hear the storm outside, stormy, Manfred Graf, hey, Bill, greetings from Denmark, oh, Denmark, I'm getting uh, quite a bit of you Euro folk today, good, 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 um, story of a train right, yep, It's very right. Um, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Um, it's, it's, it's lots, you know, uh, a lot of people have been remarking on that one. So um, clearly that's a thing I need to get my head around trying to get um, that kind of thing going. Um, but that was kind of a rare thing for me, you know what I mean? It kind of, yeah, it, just, it happened and I did it. You know? So I'll have to see if I can harness that kind of thing again, um, you know. I, I like most things creative. I think you know when you invest the time, it, you can do it better more often, right? Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you liked the video, man. Uh, and greetings from California to you in Denmark. Um, Space cowboy, pleasantly stormy, right on, man. I love that. Okay, sorry, Sandrine, if I don't remember you. My my brain is a little, you know. Well, it's wonky. I'll just cop to that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, it can do some things very well and other things that, you know, eh. Anyway, um, Reclaimer Rob, it's finally feeling a bit cooler here in Minnesota, but uh, da, 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 it's 80s again. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, I hope you can find some relief and be comfortable and all that, man. I really do. Uh, Kill Switch says, no, I'm not still going. I stopped and started again. <laughs> so good morning to you, man. It's good to see you back. Um, Although I did notice that uh, YouTube um, will let you do 12 hours, I think, of live stream, if I'm remembering that right. Um, and I even thought about trying that. Um, mm, mm -hmm. That would be ambitious, though. Um, I don't know. I'll consider that. You know, that might be, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's good to have you back, Kill Switch. <laughs> I guess I need to think of something to talk about. Uh, okay, here we go. What prescription drugs do I take? Okay, yeah, I can go through those and I'll give you the, because the, I basically right now I'm taking three with regularity and one that kind of pops in now and again. So I take uh, gabapentin for nerve pain. Um, and uh, then I take Wellbutrin, which uh, helps with uh, depression. My depression manifests as profound lethargy I just you know people go oh, you're just lazy it's like no I just can't move you know what I mean it's just and it's not it's not being sad it's not anything like it's just physically being unable to move and do things it's just anyway I, so that helps uh, like tremendously with that and I also take a thing called Lamotrigine uh, which because I also have a um, I, I guess it's a mood disorder, which I guess falls kind of tangentially into the idea of bipolar, whatever that, you know, whatever, although people tend to get an idea about what bipolar is. And I'm not sure I completely comprehend it, frankly. Um, but anyway, so I have a mood disorder, and so I eat Lamotrigine for that. Um, and then the other one, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a muscle relaxant that, um, so for when I do do something that the gabapentin can't handle because it's just a nerve pain thing. So if I tweak or do something wacky 
that almost always the pain is because of, well, there's a little bit of this inflammation, but uh, it's largely uh, motivated by the, um, uh, the spasms that result from the pinching of the nerves and stuff like that. So a muscle relaxant is, is, is what the fourth thing is. Um, good morning from San Francisco, Dexter Graham. You know, you're right across the bay. I'm in Castro Valley. And greetings back to you, man. I used to live over there on, uh, I used to live on Golden Gate, just like a couple of doors um, up from uh, Divisadero. That's where uh, Calvin Sung has his, um, uh, he used to have, I wonder if it's still there, I haven't been over there in a few years. Uh, he used to have an auto shop there that most of his parking spot is taken up by, uh, I think it's a city car share or one of those types of things. But anyway, yeah, I used to live over basically Golden Gate and Divisadero. Um, anyway, let's see how they catch up with the um, Skater Rap Monkey. Good morning, man. Good to see you again. Um, what's my dream? Like, f my dream for, uh, like, a grand dream for the world? A dream for, you know, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, if you mean my dream for my YouTube channel, um, I don't know. So, uh, so, you know, um, my dream for the world is um, agape for all and humans don't crap on each other anymore. You know what I mean? We just care for each other, right? Just imagine the world we could have if we just cared for each other. Um, anyway, there you go. No, I'm not on disability. Uh, the I'm not damaged enough yet for them to say that I qualify for disability, even though I can't. I mean, I can do things like I made those videos and stuff, right? But I can't. I, I can't really hold a job because I can't be reliable. Like I can sneeze, you know what I mean? Like some days I'm fine and I can do things. And other days something happens and I'm like in the bed with, you know, uh, the ice gel thing or on my uh, recliner with the vibrator thing going um, like that. Um, so no, yeah, no, I'm not on disability, which, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe I don't deserve to be on disability. Maybe, maybe they've made the right call. But um, it's frustrating for me because I'm currently kind of, you know, well, whatever. I'm just, whoa, whoa, was me. Anyway, so, um, um, okay, hang on. Let me scroll up. I'm missing some con comments here. That's, that's my problem. It's like there's none, and then I have one, and then I get, my mouth starts running. There we go. And, okay. Brand name Lamactyl. Yep, that sounds right. Um, well, of course, it's right. You're a pharmacist, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, um, you know, you know, bear with me for a quick sec. Uh, I'll just go look at what it is. I can go look at my, um, the, uh, my chart thing. That's how I interact with, you know, the healthcare folk and, uh, and the like. Uh, da, 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 da. So let me do, uh, medications. So there we go. Da, 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 da. And okay, it is cyclobenzaprine. Is that the one you said? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there you go, <laughs> right on the money, man. <laughs> and then log back out of here and get rid of that. Okay, yeah, there you go. Well, I guess you're a good pharmacist, man. Right on. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, medication good for mental health. I've been seriously. Okay, here's the thing, man. Um, for me, absolutely, 100%. Um, I, I, okay, I, I think I've talked a little bit about this, but I'll just you know, give the rundown again. Um, I started drinking at a pretty young age, uh, and it quickly accelerated into weekend binge drinking, which quickly developed into just drinking, drinking, which, you know, it was like, oh, just a few beers here and there, and, and drinking a lot on weekends, and then drinking a lot, like, basically, like, all the time, and then I, I turned into a blackout drunk. Um, Anyway, so I was self-medicating. Um, and then due to medical issues, I had some doctors say, stop drinking. And so I said, okay, I'll stop drinking. Um, and so I've been, uh, I've been drinking since then. Uh, that was just before I started this channel, actually. So it was quite a number of years of drinking way too heavy. And then um, I kind of did okay. Um, I was doing well. I started, eventually I started getting into, you know, trying to be in more shape, uh, eat better and these types of things. Uh, and then I did get uh, a prescription for medical cannabis, which helped me a lot. Um, and I was kind of mostly functioning, I thought, reasonably well. Um, anyway, then after the degenerative disc disease thing happened, and then the pain got just, it just became unbearable. In any case, that sort of set me off 
and it really triggered a lot of my mental health issues just really became super bad cripplingly bad uh, and I finally said, okay, I need to go see somebody, finally, you know, because I'm a man, I'm going to white knuckle it, I can, you know, let's, let's, that's just stupid. So if you have any of that in your head at all, just ditch that now, you know what I mean? If you, if you think that the meds might do you good, um, uh, if, you, if you have confidence in your primary care provider, uh, you think that they're not somebody who's just going to, you know, hand you a pill to get you out of their face or whatever, and they're actually going to take you seriously, then go tell them that you think, I mean, if you're considering it, that might in itself be enough to think, hmm, maybe, maybe it's something you should actually, you know, seriously consider. Um, but if you have any kind of issues, man, uh, and even if it turns out that maybe pills aren't the right thing, they might suggest something like talk therapy. I'm not a big fan of talk therapy for me personally in my situation. Uh, I do know that some people get a lot of help out of that kind of thing. But man, um, yes, medication is good for mental health. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that can include things like cannabis, man. You know, I know that the world has been vilified largely due to efforts here in the U.S. is like where I think that whole thing started, you know, largely due to like Hearst was one of them because of a hemp competing with his lumber mill for, you know, stuff for uh, fibers. Um, you know, it's just a horrible, horrible, there's more to it than just that. But yeah, it's just, anyway, um, let me get back onto these uh, comments here. Um, but anyway, kill switch. Uh, see to yourself, you know what I mean, man? Take care of yourself, please. You know, I mean, I, I don't mean to be overreactive and all of that, but um, you know, as you guys come into my life in this place, you're going to get into my heart and I'm going to be caring for you. I'm worrying for you. So, you know, make sure you do a good job of caring for yourself, man, right? And Dexter, oopsie daisy. Um, okay, okay. Do, do, do. Let me scroll. Okay, here we go. Okay, so bu -bu -bu bipolar, that's fun fact. It was originally meant to treat epilepsy. You know, yeah, I remember when they gave me the, the, all the paperwork with the warnings. Um, and they also, there's this thing that there's a, a particular rash that can be a bad thing when you first start taking it and you know, all these weird things. And it's also one of those that I can't stop taking it. Like, oh, well, I can stop. You can get off pills, but I, I, have to, I can't just quit and, you know, walk away from it. That's a thing you have to titrate off under medical supervision because... Apparently it can, you know, once you're on it, it's like you, you need to be on it until, you know, you can be weaned off it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I remember that about the epilepsy, th epilepsy thing. Um, yeah, okay, Dexter, yeah, you know, that's a good, you know, there you go. Uh, so Kill Switch, you can, you know, he's got a little bit of thing to say, so dig that. Helping each other, man, that's groovy, right on. Um, yeah, you know, here's the thing. I decided when I was going to do sort of the Q&A thing and do these types of things, um, in a minor way, I'm kind of a public figure, you know what I mean? In a very, very, very tiny way. Um, but I don't know whether you guys have clued in on, on it, but I'm into genuine human relationships, you know what I mean? And I want, that means I want to be genuine with you guys, which would be difficult because if I grow a gigantic you know, fan base, which would be lovely, uh, it makes it more difficult to deal with more people in any kind of you know, meaningful, uh, intimate way. But, um, I, you know, I, yeah, I just made the decision that I, would, I wanted to be honest and genuine with you guys. There are going to be some things I'm not going to share about certain specifics. Like, for ex instance, uh, you know, in general, my sexual thing is I am currently celibate and have been for a long time. Uh, it's not anything due to, uh, I do it. It's not a rule I have to behave or anything like that. But that's as far as I'm going to go about sex. You know what I mean? It's like, all right. And even if I became sexually active, it would just be, okay, I'm sexually active again. But, you know, that's about as far as I go with it. Just because I think some things that, you know, people can keep private. But uh, mental health and stuff like that, I think, because there's such a stigma. I mean, I'm sure it's uh, elsewhere in the world as well. But here in the, the United States, it's, it's the minute some, like, it's like I tend to not like to say bipolar. I tend to like to lean into the mood disorder thing. Because the minute I say bipolar, some people, yeah, I could just see they get this, oh, you're one of those. It's just like, man, I'm a human. I'm just, I guess, cognitively divergent is the nice way of saying it, right? Um, and mostly I'm fine. You know, I mean, I can function and do whatever. Uh, it's just I need a little help, and sometimes the chemicals help. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, so let's get back on to the comments. Uh, okay, Kill Switch says. Um, you know, if you have some ADHD, I mean, if it was an accurate diagnosis, you know, here in the U.S., that gets overdiagnosed a lot. Um, so, uh, hopefully, you know, if your diagnosis was accurate, um, you know, that's the thing. I know that, uh, um, yeah, I've known people with uh, ADHD who've had tremendous success with uh, 
pharmaceutical solutions. Um, uh, yeah, just let your heart guide you and your brain, you know, make sure that you're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? That's, uh, that's the advice I'll give you. Um, space Cowboy, no, I did not serve. Um, not that I have anything against serving. Um, I don't think I could have served well because I sometimes don't play well with others. You know what I mean? And I have a problem with authority ever since I was a kid. Like there was times like at school, I would just buck. You know what I mean? I would just become contrarian. There's times I was like, dude, what you, you look back and you go, why would you? The teacher was right. You should have just done the thing. But it was just like simply because I was being told to do it. I was like, yeah, fuck you. I'm not going to do that. I mean, that kind of attitude. I really had, uh, you know, especially in my, you know, not so much anymore, but a little bit. But when I was younger, yeah, there's no way I would have, if I would have served, I would have been, it would have been unsuccessful. And you know what I mean? I wouldn't have done it or any other good. It would just been a pain in the butt. Um, but anyway, so yeah, no, I've never served. But I have uh, friends and family member who, members who have. Um, my brother-in-law was a Marine who did things that we can't know about, if that gives you an idea. Um, it means it's staying in that time. Okay. Mm hmm. I'm sorry to hear about the addiction issues, kill switch. Um, yeah, self medication is a dangerous road, you know. Um, I have known people that have seemed to do it well, you know, but that could just be appearances. It's hard to say. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, you know, you know, that, uh, talk to somebody, man, about to whether or not they would help, right? You know, get some advice, right? Because everybody's situation is very different, right? And well, as was just said earlier, right? So, you know, yeah. Um, okay, Mr. Duckman says, the Motrogen pulled him out of a dark place. Um, okay, well, you know, I hope... Um, I hope that goes well for you with the with the dosage tweaking. Um, uh, yeah, um, mine got was I got lucky on that pretty quickly. Although I well, I'll just give you, you know, since we're talking about stuff and I'm being open about drugs. Initially, I was on um, gabapentin and then something I think it was called venlafaxine. Actually, I still have a bottle of it you know, just because I guess I'm gonna have to find one of those places you take to the pharmacy to get destroyed because, which I hate doing because they're fine, you know, um, but you can't redistribute drugs although maybe isn't there some place that does that anyway i'll have to look into this whatever i'm going to do with those things anyway um and the venlafaxine and gabapentin was a really really good combination as far as it, my depression was fine and all of that um and uh but i didn't sleep you know what i mean and then after after i got you know um working with a psychiatrist that was basically just to um, handle the, you know, the meds and balancing and all of that. Um, and she's the one that uh, worked out about the, um, my mood disorder, um, you know. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I hope you can, uh, Mr. Duckman, again, you know, I hope that can, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't cold turkey it right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. It'll, it'll just screw you. Although, you know, cold turkey, I did do nicotine quitting cold turkey. Um, although I guess in fairness, I, maybe I should qualify that because I was a heavy smoker for a long time. And then as you guys, well, a lot of you know, I did the vape thing for quite a bit. Um, I saw that as harm reduction, right? I was still using nicotine, but I was getting rid of the um, combustible carcinogens or the, you know, combustible or combustion byproduct carcinogens, I guess is what I should say. Um, and I thought that that was good enough, and maybe it was, or I don't know. Um, but I f basically was, uh, I was uh, meditating uh, one day, and this is what started me wanting to quit. And I stopped medica or meditating to get up and go to use nicotine. And then as I was doing, I went, what am I doing? You know what I mean? It just bothered me that nicotine took me out of my meditation. And I was like, man. And the more I thought about that, and then it kind of happened again, and, it, and I was like, I can't now. Nah, I can't do this anymore. It has to. I have to stop. So I have that. So I did nicotine cold turkey. Um, I did booze cold turkey too. But I I did that with um, a chemical dependency recovery program, the CDRP through Kaiser. Um, it's not. You don't live there. It's a uh, outpatient thing. Um, 
but you, you, you're it's supervised and I was under I did take a um, oh, I don't remember the pill um, that was supposed to be so I you know because of the whole uh, um, what, is it, what is it uh well the um, EG you would know right it's it, it's something so that we it, it's like because of the whole cold turkey like um, it's really hard uh, for the booze thing right it's a uh, man I can't think of what it was about but like you know I guess you could have like heart attacks and weird withdrawal kind of uh, bad things happen um, anyway so I, I did have that so it did help so maybe it's not exactly cold turkey because I did have supervision and some you know medical intervention to help it you know function properly um, but nicotine was completely cold turkey Yeah, you remember your brain is part of your body, right? You know what I mean, Mr. Duckman. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, your heart. If you need to take heart pills, obviously it makes sense. But see, it's it's that I can't help but think it's due to that stigma thing, man. You know what I mean? It's just we. It's just we're sort of taught to just not, you know. Well, it's, it's I guess it's a, an othering of sorts, right? You know, um, or maybe not of sorts. Maybe it just is an othering, but. Um, Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, bipolar is just you know because it, ah, there's so many things that kind of fit into a, under that big umbrella. Because um, I had a friend, uh, dear friend of mine, who was bipolar, and his uh, his experience was far more extremely unpleasant than mine. Um, I mean, it was it was if he didn't take his meds, he was meds. He was completely debilitated. Uh, but he hated taking the meds because they couldn't find one um, where he felt like himself while he was under the meds. You know. Uh, I'm lucky that way. I actually feel like I'm finally myself. You know what I mean? Like I can look back on certain episodes in the past, my past life, and go, "Hmm, what was I thinking?" You know what I mean? Um, so it's like I wish it's something that could have been caught earlier. You know? Um, anyway, but you know, you, life is what life is, and you take how it goes. You know? Um, anyways, let's see what else we got here for comments. Right, potentially fatal, yeah. I, you know what? I think aprazolam sounds familiar. I, I wouldn't swear to that 100%, but I mean, as far as the, the vowel thing, it seems to be that that's, hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, and I was only, I was only on it for, I, not, it wasn't even really all that long, frankly. Uh, I can't remember the exact time period, but, um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, look, I think I just, uh, seems like this thing jumped again. It does that. Da, 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 da. Okay, okay. Uh, Farouk, hey, Farouk, you're back. No, 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 it's a new stream. I, I stopped and had some sleep. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, kill switch, yeah, thanks, man. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, kill switch, man. Um, uh, have a good day. I hope it's uh, you know, yeah. Just have a good day, man. You know what I mean. And we'll see you next time, right on. And um, uh, morning, Wilbur. Yeah, that was the thing. That was uh, that was part of what the thing was about, right? It was uh, e.g. was uh, the delirium tremens thing, right? Because um, I know that that could, you know people hallucinate and all this sort of thing like that. Yeah. Um, so luckily, uh, I you know well, like I said, I had you know some you know medical supervision to help me get through that thing, which is you know again, see, people need to help people. <laughs> it's just what has to happen. Okay. All right. See, I guess I've been bouncing back and forth with the stream thing because of these. You know what I think it is, is I think my something's going on with this software in my mouse or something, because it seems like when I roll the mouse wheel, it goes a little fast. Like somehow this particular thing is, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just, yeah, who knows. <laughs> okay, right on. Um, so Jack asked, do I find it easy to quitting nicotine cold turkey? Yeah. Okay, so now here's the thing, and I don't want to discourage you. If you think you should quit, you should quit. Um, quitting nicotine was way harder than quitting booze for me. It was way, way harder. 
Um, but here's the thing. I was encouraged um, by the fact that I did quit booze. You know what I mean? Because like, dude, you quit booze, you can quit cigarettes, or not cigarettes, excuse me, nicotine, because it was the vapey business. Um, yeah, so I, I took it like, you know, you did one, you can do another. And it was hard, but I kept holding on to the, you did one, you can do another, you know? Um, and yeah, and uh, yeah, so I'm done with it, you know? And I, you know, I can be around people who smoke and I don't have any issues with it. Once in a while I'll get a craving, but very, very rarely. Um, same with booze. Um, and it's, yeah, you know, but, you know. Okay. Uh, space. What hobbies do you have? Um, well, this is one, right? You know what I mean? Well, you know. Um, I guess it's mildly professional now because I have made a tiny bit of money. <laughs> Being the, the minor public figure that I am, I get a little bit of, of YouTube ad revenue. And, uh, and of course, there's been, you know, a couple of people that have, you know, helped, you know, be generous in other manners. But, uh, um, but uh, so that, um, I don't think of music as a hobby. I think of that as actually my vocation. It's like a calling. It's like people go into the priesthood or teaching or things like that. You know what I mean? It, it, it just, you know, if it's in you, it's in you. You know what I mean? Um, otherwise, I kind of just, I don't know, I don't know if I really have hobbies. I, I get things that I get interested in for a while, and I do them, and then I, like for a while, I was really into making my own tie-dye t-shirts, and I kind of, eh, I don't, you know, don't really do that so much anymore. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, but to be honest, I, <laughs> I have so many things that I want to try and do creatively that, uh, you know, um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, not really any hobbies. Okay, so Farouk, uh... Yeah, right on. Well, I'm yeah, good, good on you for quitting that there, Farouk, you know? Um, I mean, there's, there's this, you know, nicotine is this weird thing, man, right? Because it's, uh, it does help with things like anxiety and it can help with alertness and things like that um, and the like, um, you know? And it's, uh, it's my understanding in EG, uh, you can chime in here if I'm remembering this wrong, um, but it's my understanding that nicotine is, a, is like, a rarefied thing in that it can stimulate your body to grow the receptors that makes you want it in the first place right you know what I mean so it's it, that's what makes it really hard it's like it's almost like it's fighting you to keep you addicted to it you know what I mean very very strange sort of you know dynamic but um, you know correct me if you have any if, if you know what that's about and uh, eg um, uh, okay so doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, the stress is it, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, Cheryl, good thing. Uh, let's see, you quit cold turkey. Yeah, there you go. Right on. Yeah, Cheryl, that's it. Right. Um, yeah, get a get a support group for you know anything that is challenging you in your life. Get a support group, right? You know what I mean? Because. Um, we're a social species. If uh, I did a, 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 a thing on this on my on WC Postman channel, uh, where I kind of just me yelling at the clouds kind of thing, uh, and I laid down, um, it's basically me talking about how you can get to Agape, you know, uh, like how I got to Agape, you know, from my perspective scientifically. Um, but the main thrust of the thing that I was arguing about is that Homo sapiens sapiens, that's us. I mean, that's the model we're using to describe the, you know, the, the organisms that is us, you know, as a collection of things. Um, and we're a social species. I mean, our survival strategy is that of social, right? You know what I mean? If you just send a human out into, you know, by himself into the world, very few humans can do that. Very, very few humans can do that. And a lot of people who say, oh, I'm you know, independent, I can do that. It's like, yeah, you probably can't. Um, most people cannot. I mean, there are those guys you know, who do that, like you know, fur trapper type people you know, back in the day. And I'm sure there's still people who have similar skill sets. Um, you know, um, but yeah, it's, and it's not anything I think that we should really be you know, aiming for, really. We're, that's how we've evolved, and, and we should leverage it, right? We should be kind to each other. We should be caring for each other. You know? um, I like... Uh, the example of bonobos, right? They're super peaceful and they just have sex a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, anyway, let's, let's keep it. Da, 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 da. So, uh, where am I at here with the comments? Um, yeah, there you go, right on. Thank you for the clarification on that, EG. Um, 
Silly putty to keep my hands busy. Oh, you know what? Since you talk about keeping your hands busy, I'll, I'll go get the thing that I use for keeping, uh, that I used to use for keeping my hands busy. Um, da -da 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 -da. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll be fast. Some of you will recognize this just from seeing the box. And I have two sets of these. These are my chrome ones, and I have another set that, that are uh, this fantastic blue enamel thing. But um, for whatever reason right now, I'm into the, into the, so it's these, right? Well, here, if I can kind of get it under the camera. I'm so awkward with this webcam, right? Ah, I haven't done it in a while. It's just like, go back the other way, dude. Go back the other way. Ah, I'm out of practice. See if I can do better with my left hand. Sometimes I can because that's my fingering hand, you know. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't try to make them quiet. I like the sound, although I know a lot of people, it's like, yeah, you got to keep them quiet. You know, I should incorporate those into some videos, I think. Do you guys like that little bell sound off those things? Did it come through on the webcam mic at all? Um, All right, NAMI, okay. I'm not, well, well, I'm drawing a blank on what NAMI is. is I'm, but yeah, getting support, getting help, having humans help each other. Yeah, right on, okay. So I'm gonna figure out how to bring those into a few videos here and there. Okay, so Gus says, hi Bill, regarding your music, do you have a Spotify or Bandcamp or anywhere one can? See, I don't. Uh, um, I know a guy who uh, is going to help me um, set that stuff up. See, here's the thing. I've just been so half-assed about everything. It's like I need to get, you know, I need to get my act together, right? You know what I mean? Now that my head is in a good enough space that I can actually manage these things, um, you know. And that's largely why I've kind of come to being more active, right? My head, I, I can actually use my brain better now. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, well, leverage my newfound, you know, better head. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I need to do that. Um, I mean, I, I don't really have much up on my YouTube channel and that's where I'll start. I'll just pull that audio off those videos and post them in, you know, those places. Um, you know, I, I think I have a couple of things on SoundCloud, but you would be better off just going to, there's more stuff on uh, Three Monks in a Tub. It's at Three Monks in a Tub. Um, and it's uh, like the number, well, here, I'll just put it in a the comment. There you go. And then uh, why I can do that, right? Do I build? You, have, you can type. <laughs> um, Right, so that's that. And then my other channel is Yeah, so there you go. Those are my two channels. Um or my two other channels other than the Bill Max Vox Packs. Um so Three Monks in a Tub is the music one and W C Postman on oh, W C it was William Charles, that's uh, my given name from my mom. Uh and Postman is obviously my my last name. Um I don't know if have I told you guys the whole William story I, i'll go ahead and do it if, if, if it's boring you and i'm repeating myself i apologize so uh, my name is william charles poshman william comes from my father's side and charles comes from my mom's side and how it works is uh in my dad's family for a while there was this kind of tradition that uh william was always the firstborn of a generation and for uh three generations in a row, William begat William, you know what I mean? So my great grandfather's son was my grandfather named William. And then um, uh, my grandfather's firstborn son was my uncle, who was also a William, obviously. And, um, but my dad is Gene. <laughs> and, uh, but my dad, uh, uh, well, my parents had me before my uncle had a child. So uh, my dad went and talked to his brother and said, hey, I'm going to name my son William because that's kind of what happens. Is that going to bug you because it's not going to be your child? And my uncle said, I wasn't going to follow it anyway, so I don't care. Um, anyway, so that's where the William comes from. And it used to be William, mother's maiden name, Poshman, right? Um, 
So uh, like my uh, uncle was William Allen Postman, right? Is that right? Yeah. Um, and I would have been William Wilcox Postman, but my mom didn't like the sound of that. So she chose to use her dad's first name. Um, so his first name was Charles. So there you go, William Charles Postman, that's me. Um, and um, I wonder if I still have it. It used to be up here. Yes. It is tarnished as hell, and I don't think you can see it. Maybe you can see it. Anyway, um, well, I don't know if you can see the engraving on it or not. Um, probably not, because it's so beat up. Anyway, this is a little silver cup that my great-grandfather had made. Um, so uh, I have one, my uncle has one, uh, my grandfather has one, and he has one. Um, anyway, I should probably take better care of it, huh? You know, it's just really kind of a little trinket memento thing. Um, but you know, sometimes those kinds of things, you can get a little of an emotional thing to them. You know what I mean? It's like uh, you can imbue them with value, right? Um, but just to remember that the stuff is just stuff, right? Um, I, the main thing that I am, as, as far as stuff goes, if you want to talk about whatever, is this one, right? Do, 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 my Rickenbacker. That's probably the, the material thing that, to me, is the most valuable thing I own. Um, anyway. Uh, anyway, okay, here we go. What I'm trying to say is it's great to see your videos popping up. Yeah, okay, I'm glad, you know. I'm sorry if I went on a weird tangent and didn't understand what you were trying to say. Oh, hey, maybe I missed your comment in the first place. Where did it go to? Let me scroll back up. I'm just so out of... Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean, Mark. Okay, now I get, I get the context of what you're talking about now. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. Right on. That's all, all groovy. All groovy. Uh, Growlrar says, you should do another video of analysis on different topics. It is very interesting. Um, okay. Uh, I don't upload the three monks in a tub. I stopped mostly just because I, I, well, I was in a bad place and I just wasn't doing anything very much. You know what I mean? Um, and I, whatever. It's a, well, I shouldn't say whatever. That's that's what it was. Is uh, my noggin wasn't working. You know what I mean? Um, and I've started to uh, work on music again now. Um, it's being slow to get started now because I'm taking it more seriously. Because right? I mean, I used to, you know, be a serious musician. Um, uh, and so I want to I want to get back to that state. Um, so it'll be a little bit before I get anything is up. Um, but there's I got irons in the fire, so there will be things coming on that channel. And I want to do some cross pollinization between the two, where I do some spoken word over music, and then I'm going to try and incorporate some of that music into. Uh, well, obviously this is spoken word, right? Um, so I'm hoping I can do that kind of thing. Um, not just because it's you know good for the YouTube algorithm and all that, which I, I hope it will be, um, but I think it would be good just for, uh, I think the work could be good, you know what I mean? Um, so I know, let's see how that goes. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, if you're a guitarist, you know, you love your guitar, don't you, right? Do you have a, so I'm assuming you have a number one, or do you have, do you have more than one guitar, first of all, and uh, what would your number one be? Because um, right now I only have two. I have the Rickenbacker, and then I have my EVH. And uh, the EVH is just, it was the inexpensive Indonesian one. Um, but I bought it because I've never owned a Floyd Rose guitar. And, you know, I figured if I'm going to buy a Floyd Rose guitar, I might as well get, the, you know, Eddie, right? I mean, come on now. <laughs> Eddie is Eddie, man. Well, I guess Eddie was Eddie. You know, rest in peace, my friend. Um, well, I didn't know him, so maybe friend is you know, presumptuous, but um, yeah, he, he was impactful, wasn't he? Man, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I got that, um, and there you go. So those are the only two guitars I have right now. Um, yeah. I don't know if that ever comes across on the mic. You know, when my spine creaks. Um, I guess it doesn't because I never notice it when I'm editing. Um, yeah, it seems loud as hell to me, but you know, of course it resonates up my spine and into my ears. So um, anyway, click, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, 
Ah, okay. Um, yeah, get bass, bass, guitar, right? It's all good. It's all good. I mean, you don't you don't really need more than one guitar, do you? Right? There's that thing. How many guitars do you need? And they have all these guys that say, okay, you need to have a Strat, and then you need to have a Tele, and then you need to have a Les Paul, and then you need to, you know, it's like no, you don't. You only need one guitar. Um, now, that's not to say that you can't use more than one guitar to get you know, you know, a broader palette of sounds. But if you're just, if you're going to be a guitarist, you need a guitar. Um, yeah. But now, if you want to play bass guitar, right? Then um, yeah, get a bass because you know I'm not a big fan of using those, uh, you know, just electronically octave tuning down to your guitar to get that sound. I mean, sometimes you can get good results that way. But I think physically holding a bass, if you're going to play bass, I think there's value in that. Oh, you lied. You have what? Would you have a? What is it that you have? And also, you don't mind my poking my nose. And uh, do you do you play an amp, or do you just do, uh, uh, you know, like into a DAW or whatever? I I mostly just play into a DAW. I've got some of this. I don't even know where I got this little cheesy solid state Fender amp. It just sort of appeared in my possession, and I have no idea how I acquired it. <laughs> it's like what? Where did this come from? So clearly, it must have been somebody came over and we did a jam, and that just sort of got forgotten or something like that. I mean, that means I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I had no idea because nobody's been over here to jam with me and I didn't ever jam in San Francisco so would, how did it get in with my stuff man I don't know <laughs> um. oh I see <laughs> as far as the acoustic car. yeah fine yeah you know it's a uh, you know um, uh, uh, you know like one of those little cajon drum things right you know what I mean I think yeah do that and uh do you leave strings on it to get the sympathetic resonances at times? You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be great. And Horrendosaurus says, Bill, I'm growing my hair and beard, and I hope. Well, thank you for the compliment. And, you know, yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, grow it, grow it, grow it. I hope it gets as magnificent as you would like it to be. Oh, wow, 30 people. You know, I didn't keep track of the count last night. I mean, I try not to get too caught up in that kind of thing. It's not a popularity contest, right? It's about quality. Um, but, uh, you know, it just amuses me. Um, so there you go. Bye. And what's the time getting to be? Okay, yeah, we're fine. I don't, I don't really have any place to be. I'm just trying to be mindful of... I've been sitting at the computer for quite a bit since 9 last night, so I know I'm going to be spending the, some time on the recliner later today, you know, just to sort of decompress and uh, and the like. Um, but I, I, you know, I got on the recliner last night before I went to sleep, and then I got some, you know, it was only about six hours, but, I, you know, maybe it was a little damn, more like five and a half, it doesn't matter. I, 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 I think I got some quality sleep, so I'm feeling mostly okay right now. Um, hit the like button, guys. Thanks, EG. <laughs> yeah, it all helps, right? You know what I mean? Um, you know, and here, here's the thing, as much as I would fantasize about having YouTube contribute to, you know, my material existence, um, I'm going to do it whether, I, you know, I, you know, I'm going to make this in music regardless of whether it becomes financially successful for me or not. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is, this is, because ASMR is valuable to me. I mean, it's not just, ooh, it's fun to tingle. Um, I mean, it actually is, you know, it helps me, you know, at times when, uh, well, for an example, now in my current state, with you know, when my spine's giving me grief and whatnot, I can you know uh, put on an ASMR video and I can use it to uh, you know get into a better place mentally, right? And then I can I can the the physical discomfort can kind of fall away, right? I can you know put my head in a different place, and um, and I know other people have expressed very similar sentiments with that. So I think ASMR is super super valuable, um, and so yeah, I. So I enjoy it, and I seem to have a, a talent for it. So yeah, it's going to be done. You know what I mean? It has become part of me now. You know? Okay, what's this? Uh, I play sometime, but it bent so much it's hard to play. Okay, yeah, you know. It, you know, it's, it's, you know repurposing is fine, man. Right? 
Right on, Adrian. Yeah, you know. Other people have said similar things, and not just me, right? I'm not just here like I'm, you know, some glorious, you know, solution, whatever. Um, uh, you know, yeah, it's a common thing, right? Hi, Sunny Thief. How are you doing? Whereabouts you from? How's it going in your world? I wish I knew jokes or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I did do computer programming for a little while. Um, I started off, I first learned to program as a kid because my dad had computers uh, around the house for a bit. Um, but this is back in the 70s. Starting, I think the first time we had one that I tinkered with would have been, I'm going to say like 76, 77, something like that. Um, when did it come? It was an Exidy Sorcerer. I don't remember its release date. Um, I think it had been out for a minute by the time we got it. Uh, but it had 16K, right, memory. 16k dig that I mean you have to pay attention to your resources when that's all you've got man <laughs> um, yeah I wrote my own little uh, um, the, the only thing that of any note was uh, I wrote my own um, uh, slot machine program you know what I mean I'm, and I made my own little fruit characters because the exit sorcerer uh, you could do a poke peek thing and, and, and make your own characters using um, Zillig Z80, I think, was the machine language on that. Um, and then uh, mostly the stuff I did, though, was in BASIC. And I mostly just had it make me... I was really big into the whole Save the Whales movement back then as a you know, teenager. And so I made a lot of my own computer-printed-out Save the Whale-type posters and stuff like that that I'd give to friends and make for myself and that kind of thing. Um, you know, like I made one that was a, it was a picture of a whale. I just drew a picture, outline of a whale, and it said, save the whale, save the whale, save the whales, all the way around the outline, right? That kind of thing. So I did that as a kid. And then I kind of fell out of it for a while. And then, uh, oh, after I uh, got done with university, um, and then I went to the Netherlands for a bit, and I was, that was supposed to be a permanent move, actually. And then the guy I was going there to work with, it ended up, we had a falling out, like a profound falling out. And so I fled, the, literally fled. The, I'll tell that whole story someday. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Anyway, so I finally got back to the States. Um, and I was staying with my folks because, you know, where else was I going to go? Um, and uh, Dad said, hey, you know, you could, you know, learn HTML and get a little money that way. And so that's how I kind of started. And then, you know, then learn JavaScript. And then from there... Um, Actually, from there, that's when I started getting work. And then, um, so I just learned things as I needed. Because I'm a firm believer, if you understand the fundamentals of programming, the language is irrelevant. That's just syntax. Now, certainly, different languages have different benefits because there's built-in features, right? But the logic that underlies the decision-making is the same. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, if you're skilled enough, you could turn a word processor into a DAW, right? Why would you do that? It's just a waste of time. Um, but, you know... Um, yeah, anyway, um, anyway, so here we go. Let's go back to comments here before I start, you know, babbling off about my ideas about computer programming. Uh, oh, and just to finish that up, I mostly did uh, stuff that was to do with web development. Um, uh, I got started, I worked for actually the company that my dad worked for. I ended up getting a gig with them as a contractor, you know, a time and materials contract. And uh, that led to where I got, you know, a lot more work. Um, but they did, uh, they were called Docent, and they did online learning distribution. Um, so they, they had tools for actually making uh, learning stuff, you know, for content, and then uh, uh, management and distribution software as well. And um, it was pretty, it was proprietary. So on the, what the, we called the CDS, the content delivery system, um, that was super proprietary. Um, uh, but for the front end, for users, it was, it was GUI and it was really useful, um, very powerful. But for the back end, for doing development, it was, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, and then their, uh, the server system, which was the management, and actually it's the thing that the, the content delivery system was sort of a subset of the other thing, but uh, came to be that way anyway. Um, yeah, and they, they had their own proprietary, it was called Docent, um, obviously Docent, but uh, it was a, a tagged script thing. Um, so it was like, a, it was PHP before there was PHP. Um, uh, maybe not as, yeah, not as powerful feature-wise because it was specific just to their thing, but that's what it did because a lot of, but I had used before that was server-side JavaScript, but it requires you, you to compile it and a whole mess of stuff. And PHP just being, you know, a straight scripting thing and the way it renders and it, it, yeah, I just, the whole LAMP thing, I got very into that. So the, 
Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, PHP. I got really, really into that and got very good at using that environment to, you know, good, good results. Um, anyway, so there's my computer programming experience um, in a nutshell anyway. All right, right on, you're doing well, Sunny P. Glad for that. Um, uh, I did have a high paying job in Silicon Valley for a while. Well, it wasn't exactly Silicon Valley. It was in Mountain View. Um, that's, those, that's just what I was talking about. And then that led to, you know, just contracting with other places. And for a while I made a good bit of money. Um, it was a very short period of time though, really. Um, yeah, you know, I made, I made, I made more money than I knew what to do with at the time. And again, because I was not mentally healthy and not aware of the fact that I was mentally unhealthy, I wasted tons of money. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing to show for the fact that I made a lot of money during that time period. Um, you know, whatever, you know, it is what it is. You know, my life is my life and I have to endure it and, and then enjoy it as it comes and as my make it, right? Uh, thoughts on the German Empire. Um, I'm assuming you mean historically, right? And we're talking about uh, post Bismarck or, um, you know what I mean? I don't know. Hmm. I mean, you know, Bismarck was really influential in there being an actual what we think of as Germany, right? And uh, was it F Frederick, Frederick William or something? Was that the King of Prussia guy? Um, I don't remember. To be honest, uh, uh, sometimes my brain gets fuzzy on history. I kind of have a grasp on history that's kind of broad strokes, more or less, except for little bits here and there that I, you know, glam onto. Uh, so that's about as much as I could say on the German Empire. Unless you're speaking of like, you know, what you want to call Nazi Germany an empire. And if that's the case, then, um, uh, yeah, burn it down. You know what I mean? Um, Hitler was a monster. Well, I'm not going to go into further of how fascism is, you know, elsewhere in the world right now. Let's not get that ugly for a Sunday morning. Um, anyway, are all, are you still fluent in any coding languages? Um, you know, probably not. You know, just because I haven't done it. Let's see, the last time I really wrote any code um, would have been probably 2007, 2008, something like that. And that would have been, well, it was in a LAMP situation. Yeah, so it would have been, you know, um, in PHP. Um, you know, but here's the thing. It's, it's If then go to, right, you know, I mean, nobody uses go to really anymore, do they? That's such a linear thing, but, you know. Uh, you know, conditional statements, however you want to formulate them, are conditional statements. You just have to learn syntax. So it's like, um, like for example, uh, when I was working, one time uh, they needed to have a data feed that needed to be done in Perl. But this is Perl and that is different than what's Perl now is not what Perl, the Perl I used then. This would have been in uh, 99, 2000, this sort of era. Um, anyway, it was for doing a thing that... Uh, it was an insurance company. I think it was Merrill Lynch needed to do a data feed um, into a thing. And um, I don't remember why it was I needed to use Perl. I think it's because they had some existing existing stuff I had to latch into. Um, I didn't know Perl. But the thing is, is I was part of a team uh, as a what was called professional services at Docent. Um, and uh, this, yeah, this is, again, why, why I did, uh, that's where I made most of my money was actually working with Docent, even though I was just a contractor there. Um, uh, Anyway, so I, uh, nobody knew Pearl and was doing it. They're like, oh, how are we going to manage this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I'll stop at Fry's on my way home and pick up, you know, Pearl for idiots and I'll learn it tonight and then I'll come back and we'll do it tomorrow. So I did that. You know what I mean? You know, you, you know it's syntax is syntax. Um, so if, if you're confident in your programming ability, be confident, right? You know what I mean? Um, learn the logic. The logic is what's important. Um, at least that's my perspective. Um, and I've known other programmers that have a similar perspective. Um, it's problem solving and logic that's the fundamental thing you need to get down. Anyway, uh, how am I? I'm actually surprisingly well. I had a really good experience with last night's stream. Um, I, was, well, I, was, I was afraid I wasn't going to get to sleep because I was a little buzz. You know what I mean? It's like, ooh, what, wasn't that great? And I'm feeling that now again this morning. It's like I haven't had caffeine, but I feel definitely kind of up and peppy about it. You know what I mean? So I'm doing well. Um, uh, Oh, right. I'm a, I like a lot of Kubrick stuff. Which movie is that? I have not seen that, but that's absolutely a thing I should see. Um, <laughs> I like Kubrick a lot. Um, 2001 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, well, I'll just, I said it last night, I think. So 2001, um, uh, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and The House of the Flying Daggers. Those are kind of my three 
favorite movies. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, for different reasons, each one. But uh, ah, man, yeah, mm, great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. Um, okay, yeah. So, uh, you know, you know that maybe that's a topic. Maybe because you know people have been suggesting that I do uh, sort of semi-academic things. You know. Um, and I don't mind doing a thing where it's not necessarily that I'm authoritative on it, but that I'm in the process of, you know, kind of getting information and trying to, you know, in doing in the moment learning anal analysis. Um, that might be valuable. So, like, you know, maybe I'll come up with an idea of, oh, I should learn this, find the sources, um, and then uh, do it, like, you know, in front of, uh, why, uh, film it, you know what I mean, and make a video out of it as I do it. That might be, uh, yeah, I think that's a thing that I'll have to fold into my, you know, my workflow. So here's the thing, I'm never going to have a lack of, you know, uh, stuff to do for making videos. It's just a matter of me continuing to, you know, keep up uh, with my time management and continue to improve it. Um, anyway. Okay, here we go. So Space Cowboy says... Da, 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 da. Okay, I don't know Vizzy, I don't know Lua. Um, I think I've used Python in the past. Again, but that would have been a thing where it's like, for a project, I would go learn this and then come do it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but see, here's the thing, if you've got some experience in that, then you're probably on the right path. You'll, you'll be a fine programmer if that's, if that's your, uh, you know, where you wanna head down, you know? Um, sounds like you've got, you got a good, it sounds like you got your head in the right space. <laughs> right space, space cowboy, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah, 2001 is amazing, isn't it? And uh, I haven't seen Full Metal Jacket. How is that for a crime? As much as I like uh, 2001, and, uh, you know, I, yeah, I gotta go, I gotta, yeah. I haven't been watching movies a lot lately. I just, um, Paths of Glory, okay, I'll keep that into my head. All right, I appreciate the recommendation, Jonathan. You know, I'm gonna need to, because I don't have a, um, I don't currently have a, a subscription to any screening streaming service. I'll have to ask my dad. Maybe I can, you know, get in on his if he has one or something. You know what I mean? Maybe he has an extra, um, you know, space for an extra profile or something like that in his stuff. I don't know. I'll talk to him about that. I mean, well, you know, because I have used his stuff before in the past. Like he said, hey, you should check out this movie. And he lets me use a login so I can, you know, just go check something out. Oops, chat got disconnected. What was this? Okay, here we go. Thank you. My goodness. All right. Oh, right on. Going to go be a pilot. Right on. Uh, my grandfather was a Navy guy. It was during World War II, but he was a submariner. He was a uh, chief engineer on the subs. Or on, you know, yeah, but, you know, he was Scotty for submarines in World War II. You know, um, yeah. He barely ever talked about it, though. He was very not wanting to, you know, he wasn't one of those guys that told a bunch of war stories. I think I've mentioned this before. The only time I remember hearing him ever say anything about the war. So everything I know about him is from my grandmother telling me when he wasn't around because he didn't like talking about it. Um, so one time I was sitting around, I think it was with my uncle. Maybe my dad was around. It was like a Sunday afternoon when we were visiting, visiting our, my grandparents. And uh, Grandpa was walking through the room, and we were watching. It was a Sunday afternoon, watching a war movie, some old World War II movie. This would have been in the seventies. I was a kid, um, and he wa was walking through the room. And he stopped. And he kind of looked at the TV. He was going by on it, and he kind of nodded his head, and he went, "Those nippers sure could fight." And I was like, "That's the only thing he ever said." I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway. It's like, it's, it's just such a weird, weird, weird thing to just kind of say out of the blue. I mean, it wasn't out of the blue, I guess, because the movie kind of triggered it, but no explanation, no what was that about, and everybody in the room was kind of like, ah, okay, that's Grandpa. Um, yeah, he was a pretty problematic guy in some ways, though. Uh, he had uh, certainly some racist tendencies, which was kind of meh. Um, and he had a horrible relationship with his son, who was gay. Um, he just couldn't. Yeah, and he was homophobic, and he just couldn't. It was, it was just it was a, they had a bad, bad relationship after my uncle came out. Anyway, they're both dead now, so I guess it's just you know memories of you know things that didn't go as well as they could have. Hmm. Yeah. 
But anyway, I hope you do the uh, the pilot thing, man. That's very exciting. I hope it's very exciting for you too. And I hope you get to do things you feel good about. You know what I mean? Um, I hope you don't. They don't. You know. But if you're in the Navy, you know, there's a, always the chance they're going to ask you to do horrible things. That's part of the military, isn't it? It's like my brother-in-law was a Marine, um, and he was a, a, a sniper kind of special forces sort of guy. You know what I mean? And that's about all I know. Because you know, he, you know, he, there's stuff he can't talk about. Like he had issues with. Uh, he needed to do a thing. I don't remember what it was, but it was like an insurance company needed a thing or whatever, and so they asked for something about his records or whatnot. And tons of his stuff is just redacted the hell out of you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Anyway, you know, you know, so you know, the military asked people to do those things, which you know, yeah, whatever. It's just. I, fr I get frustrated because you know I realize that war is a reality in our in our current world, but I would like it not to be because it's just so tremendously wasteful. And I'm not even, I don't care about money. Money is a ridiculous, you know, arbitrary abstraction that we use to facilitate trade. But we've near just uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, neurotically, it's like a cultural neurotic thing that we've turned money into something that it shouldn't be. Anyway, but even aside from the money thing, if you just think about it in physical resources that are things that have been processed and turned into things, and then the humans, especially the humans, the just the waste, the just raw waste of humans, both the soldiers and the civilians, and it's just, ah, we need to find a better way of being on the planet, man. We really do. Anyway, okay, so let's get off downers, okay? Um, anyway, I'm, I'm happy for you, Space Cowboy. I wish you all the success that you can you know, garner for yourself, man. Um, so Jonathan, uh, I like the, I didn't see that one. I need to see that one because I like Denzel Washington. I like him a lot as an actor. You know, one of my favorite movies and it's, you know, uh, is Man on Fire. He is really good in that. Uh, and it's sort of a dark thing. You know, it's a dark movie and that, you know, whatever. But he is a powerful actor. His presence is just amazing. Man, I like Denzel Washington a lot. So when you talk about aerospace agency, do you have aspirations to go the NASA route and maybe even, you know, actual, you know, you know, uh, ISS and things like that? Um, dude, that would be so cool if I had a friend up in space. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to push you anywhere, man. But yeah, you know, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, you know, do stuff, fly, you know. I have a, a couple of friends that are pilots and... Uh, I've been up in, you know, like small planes with them, you know what I mean, like just little private two-seaters and, you know, like little Cessna type things. And, uh, man, one of the guys, he's, he's a prankster, he's a trickster, and he would do stalls and stuff without, you know, just like, oh, what are you doing, man? You know, it's like I'm falling out of the sky for a split second, and he would just chuckle, and he would do, you know, like these whoop de doos He never took me on a, uh, anything where he could do a loop-de-loop -loop or anything like that, although he had offered, and I was like, man... I wouldn't trust you in a plane that would do that, man. Because you're just, he, he, he's, you know, it's like, I promise I wouldn't do anything. It's like, yeah, dude, no, I don't trust you. <laughs> I mean, he would never cause me harm, but it would just be more than I could probably take as far as my amusements, you know, thing, whatever. But do I read any philosophy? Um, um, yeah, we talked a little bit about that last night. Um, I don't know that I have strong opinions about philosophers. Here's the thing. I read philosophers like a thief. You know what I mean? I read them. I try to get something out of it that helps me have insight into the universe. And then I don't really care anymore. I don't have hero worship for anybody. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's like if it's, if it's a good thing. Like Marx, for example, right? Uh, I'm not a Marxist. Um, I, although I do think Marx's criticisms of capitalism are, you know, pretty good criticisms of capitalism. Um, but, you know, like, okay, so we talked about this. So who, I was talking about Schopenhauer a little bit. Um, uh, I, I kind of like him. He's very intriguing to me, appealing in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, when I was in college, uh, I took a philosophy of art course, and the professor was really into Hegel, um, and I really kind of got into a certain amount of that. Um, oh, another person I got exposed to while I was in that class was Derrida, who's one of those postmodern guys. I find him difficult to read. Um, and there's times I'm, I, there's times I'm like, going, dude, are you serious? You know what I mean? It's just, well, you know, whatever. Um, um, 
Yeah, but that, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably not the best guy to ask about philosophy. I mean, unless you just want, you know, a, a, me to babble about my perspective on things, which I think I do plenty without any, you know, provocation. So, um, yeah. Uh, Space Cowboy, SpaceX, NASA, Blue Origin, etc. Oh, right. Ah, they're taking it out, aren't they? Right, 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 right. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of people um, who are expressing uh, credible interest that uh, our uh, things about space should be expanding, and I agree with that. Um, you know, listen to people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know. Um, I do like the idea of space stations. Although, man, we need to be careful about how much stuff we throw up there, right? What do they call that phenomenon that if you put so much stuff up there, we could trap ourselves, right? Because of the way that that stuff breaks up, and it's going to turn into this, you know, like a... I don't know how to describe it, like like our own little self-made asteroid field, but that would actually be dense, you know what I mean? Not like our actual asteroid field, which is completely misrepresented in movies, you know? Um, I don't I mean, you know, if it's science fiction, you could have a different asteroid field somewhere else, but I kind of doubt that asteroid fields develop any very much differently than ours, frankly. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just too naive about, you know, mechanics and things, but um, yeah, yeah, anyway. Okay, so John says you enjoy watching lectures. Yeah, yeah, there you go, right on, yeah. Jonathan, there you go, yeah. Oh, thanks, Gus. <laughs> I mean, and hopefully it's like that, you know? Yeah, if it's, if, if it's, if you get joy out of it, then that's, that's enough for me, man, right on, right on. Okay. Ah, is there anything, is there any tangents that I've forgotten to tie back up? I have a bad habit of that. I get off on tangents and I forget what started the tangent and trying to go back to it. I'm really, really bad about that. So when, when and if I do that, please just say, hey, Bill, you forgot, dot, 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 just fill in the blank and nag me about it, you know. As long as you're not rude, I, I don't mind nagging. Um, okay, where I am, it's 10.15. California time is 10.15 a.m. What about you, JS25? What time is it there? I'm bad with time zones and all that kind of stuff. I've become reliant on technology to solve those problems for me. <laughs> you know, it's like people do the, um, you know, the uh, map thing for uh, getting, you know, turn left here, that kind of thing in cars. Um, but uh, when I was younger, we had the the Thomas, is it Thomas or Thomas? Yeah, Thomas, uh, those map books. Um, you know, we actually had to read maps for real. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I know it's very interesting, uh, different uh, technology application, right? Um, now, the turn left, turn right is, you know, I, I suppose in a lot of ways way more convenient. Um, but there is a value in knowing how to read a map. Um, now, if you can get your orientation and, it's, you know, just reading a map is a good idea, learning to read a map. Okay, luckily nothing... Yeah, you're right about that, but it could certainly screw us up for a while, though, couldn't it? Right? You know what I mean? I, yeah, I think I just think we need to be careful. We need to do our stuff uh, smart. Oh, Wales, right on, six p.m. Of course, right, right, right. I have a friend that lives uh, um, in the like the uh, Chester region, right? Um, he uh, he teaches up there. He's a he's an art guy. Which uh, whereabouts in Wales? What I mean, I've been there. Where did I go? Um, there was a woman that was a friend of my friends, and I don't remember whereabouts she was. Um, but it would have been uh, like southeast Wales. Um, yeah, I, man, I cannot remember a city, but that that's kind of where it was, um, and just in general geographic area. Um, oh, thanks for. Uh, 
So you're in the same time zone as uh, for the hell of it then. See, I've, you know, and I'm sorry if I'm not keeping track of your, where your guys' locations and stuff as this goes. It's just, you know, it gets easy for me to get kind of, you know, flutter headed and uh, for things to fall out of my head. Okay, Swansea, right, 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 okay. Right on, yeah. I find the UK, I, I really like it as far as just the, um, the physicality of the place and the geography of the place. It's so green, you know what I mean? Um, and I don't mind the kind of moist fogginess of it at times, you know what I mean? Although I guess you guys are getting some heat up there, aren't you? My friend was saying they've been having some, yeah, not, not pleasant, you know, not what you want. Okay, right on, right on. In South England, um, my friend before he, well, he's moved around a bit, but uh, the la when I was there last in 98, and also before that when I was there in, uh, what was that? Uh, I think it was 93, yeah, 93. Because um, I visited there when I went to the Netherlands, right? I popped over to visit my friend. And he was living in South Sea because um, he taught at a couple of different institutions there. But he had a couple of uh, part-time contracts. Um, one of them was in Bournemouth. Um, but yeah, we spent, yeah, he, he lived in South Sea, so I, you know, lived on his couch for a little bit of time. Um, and it was fantastic. I love it down there as well. Uh, I think I mentioned before that I would, if I was a wealthy man, I think I'd keep a place in South Sea. Um, just I really, really liked it down there. There's, you know, there's a lot there, you know, I mean, or at least a lot of stuff that interests me was there, you know, just for, you know, being able to get places. And of course, from the UK, you can pop over to Europe and although, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, good. At least you're back to, you know, something that maybe I would enjoy. But yeah, when I was younger, I liked warm weather, really warm weather. But as I get older, I'm like, I want things to just be nice and temperate. Um, when I was in Puerto Rico, um, it was really nice. It was really, really nice. It was like high 70s, you know what I mean? Which, that's comfortable for me. Um, and it was like, yeah, I could just walk around in shorts and sandals and, you know, an Aloha shirt and, you know, just be like, yeah, I'm cruising. Um, I really liked Puerto Rico as well. Um, anyway. Uh, Washington State, no. Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, only is, you know, that uh, trip you take with school, you know, when you're a kid to go, you know, see all the stuff. Um, oh, wow, that's unfortunate about South Sea. Hmm. Man, you know, well, I hate to hear about anybody struggling, you know, frankly, but yeah. I can't, the, what was the place that I used to like? Um, it was this pub I went to. It was called the North Coat. I really quite liked that pub. Um, well, I like pubs in general, just pub culture is, I think pub culture is way superior to American bar culture. I think our bar culture is just super dysfunctional. I mean, I know that there's piss heads over there and stuff too, but um, I don't know. I just think we just, I, we're just overall worse when it comes to things like alcohol. Um, yeah, I have been to Giorno Gino. I have been to Europe. I've been to uh, the UK and the Netherlands. Um, I went through Belgium to get between those two. I didn't really stop, but other, you know, at the train station, get out and go walk around and then go back in. Uh, where was that? I can't think. Hmm. I think I've only been on shuttles. I think it was Belgium and the Netherlands is the only places I left on shuttles to get between the UK and, uh, and Europe. Um, I think that's right. Did I do, did I do go through any of France? Did I go through like Calais or something like that? I mean, it's only really been a few times that I've done that back and forth. One time I did it on the jet foil. Do they still use the jet foil? And does anybody know um, uh, where that might have most likely been out of uh, to go between um, the UK and, and Europe? Um, but so I spent uh, two, uh, well, one three month stay in the Netherlands. One was more like a two month stay. It was supposed to be a permanent stay. Um, 
but then uh, I ended up well whatever I, I, I didn't stay because we, I had a falling out with the guy um, and then I went back to the UK and spent more time with my friend uh, the first time I went to the UK was in 85 with, was with some friends I was 20 and it was one of those you know a bunch of friends put some money together we rented a house in Hebden Bridge for a month it was July of 85 and so we stayed kind of up in that area you know up in the north or whatever you want to call that um, it's you know West Yorkshire um, and then uh, for August of 1985 we rented a house in uh, East Sheen out uh, west of Hammersmith um, and that was a really good summer I mean I busted my butt to earn the money to be able to afford to do it you know uh, but man that was a fun summer that was really really good um, oh one thing of note I got to see there is there was a retrospective of the painter Francis Bacon and I'm a real fan of his work especially those large triptychs it's just powerful stuff man um, yeah okay may, okay so maybe so maybe I did go through France that way then for the uh, thanks Martin um, um, okay, so for the hell of it says, I made a majority of my friends in the, uh, you know, yeah, you know, when I was younger, that's what I did too. But, um, and here's the thing, when I gave up drinking, um, none of those people I, I could be friends with anymore, partially because some of them couldn't tolerate the idea that I gave up drinking. Um, and you know what I mean? They were just kind of assholes about it. Uh, and then the, the couple of people that weren't assholes about it, um, there were times I couldn't be around them when they were drinking and they wouldn't respect that they would go oh, yeah, I'm glad you quit drinking but you know it's like but dude you're, you're showing at my house drunk you know what I mean that's just not you know what I mean anyway so I lost a lot of those friends um, actually pretty much all of them frankly um, and it's like they just sort of fell away fell away fell away fell away and it's just like okay you know it is what it is um, okay space cowboy born in Tacoma now live in DC all right so <laughs> both Washington's right on <laughs> West Coast, East Coast. How is it like to be in uh, D.C. as a younger person? Is there, you know, is it kind of a cool and exciting place to be? Or is it just, you know, because, you know, I might, like I said, my only time spent there was uh, as a kid, you know, during that, you know, ubiquitous, you know, trip. Um, you know, but I don't know, I kind of have a jaded perspective on D.C. that, you know, I have this vision of, you know, congressmen and senators having, you know, uh, coke parties. Like, what was that guy that was making those allegations back a few years ago? I mean, that didn't surprise me. I said, yeah, of course they do, you know. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's just an uh, inappropriate, uh, you know, jaded perspective. Um, oh, wow, sort of boring. That's too bad. Well, at least you got online, right? You can <laughs> hang out with me once in a while. <laughs> Sorry, that's really not much, is it? Yikes. Yeah, we'll do something, you know, find your own excitement, I guess, is yeah, whatever, but. Okay, so you're kind of on the border of the, right on. So do you have, you know, so you say rural slash urban, um, can you like at least get access to some decent nature, like some hiking trails and picnic spots and, you know, that kind of thing, you know, where you can actually go be out and, you know, see some trees and birds and, you know, smell some fresher air than normal and that kind of thing. Um, you know, we have a few spots like that here in California that are readily accessible, you know, to where I am. Um, well, even San Francisco, Golden Gate Park is a fantastic park. Um, especially uh, the part I like is the AIDS, well, not the whole thing I like, but um, uh, uh, I, we did, uh, we scattered my uncle's ashes in the AIDS Memorial a uh, bit of the Golden Gate Park, and that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful part of the park. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I like parks and stuff. But if you can get even a little bit more, well, a little bit, you know, that's right in the middle of the city. It's urban as hell. Um, but, you know, when you get out into, like, where I'm is pretty suburb. Well, it is suburb. It's straight up suburb. Um, but there's a place called uh, Lake Chabot that has a lake with a trail around it. You can ride a bike or walk. Um, they, used to, they used to be able to feed the ducks there, but I don't think they let you do that anymore because people were, well, Screwballs were, you know, not being nice to the ducks, and you know, I think that's why they stopped. Because, you know, anyway. Uh, but I like that kind of stuff. When I was younger, I used to like backpacking. I haven't done that in a gazillion years, and now I don't think my spine would bear it. So, eh, you know. 
you know, but I could probably get to uh, like Point Reyes is very civilized sort of uh, way of going out to a campground. You know, I could probably put my stuff in a wagon and just drag it out to like Wild Camp. You know what I mean? That's one of the camps out at uh, Point Reyes. Um, I should consider that. I mean, it's not like trail breaking or anything like that, obviously, because you know it's, it's a well-established, broad trail. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, trees are trees, and animals are animals, and it's fun to be out in there. I think it's good for the human soul. I think we've done ourselves harm by, uh, you know, dividing ourselves so um, kind of discreetly from you know nature, and like kind of this view of like there's nature and there's us. It's like, man, we're nature. We're still a subset of it. We like to think of ourselves as being entirely different, but you know, um, but we're not. We're still animals. Homo sapiens sapiens, man, right? So coming up on ten thirty. Uh, so it's ten thirty my time. Um, I'm probably going to only go for about another half hour to eleven. Um, uh, that's you know, just to set expectations. You know, what I mean, you know, it might dribble a little longer than that, but. Um, Hey Armin27, how you doing, man? <clears throat> you know, it's funny when I look at, because uh, I use OBS to do the streaming thing, right? And so the OBS window's here. That's what I look at because it's easiest for me to see what's going on and making sure everything's working right. Um, and also there's the camera there. So at least I feel like I'm kind of looking in a direction that makes you guys feel like I'm facing you. Um, and, but there's the YouTube thing over here, um, but it lags, you know what I mean? It's just funny to watch. All right, I'm over here and I'm pretty much in real time. There's a little bit of a lag that's just to do with latency, right? Um, but then over there, oh, clearly it's a, um, a form of latency, but it's just, um, it's so big that it's crazy. Anyway, okay, so here we go. Uh, okay, Space Cowboy, oh yeah, I've gotten lucky enough to hike in the, oh, right on the Appalachian Trail, I'm jealous. Okay, uh, do you know where you might move to? I'm assuming if you're if your dad's in the army and you guys are there, um, and maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but it makes me think he's probably an officer. Um, but that you know that might be me being naive about how the military works too. Um, so JV25, not sure what your take on it might be, but I'd argue that humans were more free in a way living back in the air. You know, yeah, you know, I there is a certain thing about that that is true. Um, but it would depend on where you lived, though, wouldn't it? It would depend on the power structure around you, because there were some evil, you know, kings and stuff that just did some heinous stuff. Um, but if you could live in a reasonably cool place where you weren't under the yoke of somebody, and you could maybe have your own land, and or you know, like that, yeah, there's certainly that. And of course, um, freedom to be around the planet, right? You know what I mean? Um, I know people like to go on and they think about cars as being a way of, you know, freely moving about, but it's not, man. You have to go on the roads, man. I mean, obviously you can do off-road things, but I can go infinitely more places with my two feet than you can go on a car. And I, you know, I, yeah, anyway, that's me and my take on things. I don't want to force anybody into anything, but I think the world would be better if we could kind of look back and go, okay, what worked and why did we drop it? You know what I mean? Um, I think I think there's things that we could go grab out of our past that might help us improve our future but maybe I'm just being naive I don't know um, yeah you're right Giorno yeah it's sad isn't it um, and most of the time the destruction isn't really you and me and, and normal people it's to do with you know people who get to make decisions about resources in a broad policy manner you know whether it's corporate or you know government or whatever and uh, it's largely to do with power and greed you know what I mean and so for them to do their crappy little game the rest of us and not just us as humans but you know certainly an impact on the you know the rest of the biosphere in general um, I mean but here's the thing we're not going to kill the planet we're going to kill us and we'll take a bunch of species with us you know what I mean if we're not if we don't wise up uh, who knows maybe some of us will survive you know that would be you know I don't know if that's a good thing or not but you know whatever I, I, I shouldn't be so you know negative on that stuff but um, yeah um, yeah 
You know, I often get uh, kind of weirdly nostalgic for Iron Age stuff. You know, I mean, like the idea of just, you know, wearing a tunic and some simple sandals or simple shoes. And, you know, I could make music and, you know, um, I would, you know, know people who farm. Like I'd play music for them and they'd feed me their farm fresh food. You dig what I'm saying? That something about that just seems really groovy. Um, you know, that's clearly an oversimplified view of life, I guess. But, um, it, it, but it is, you know, um, romantically appealing, you know. You know, from the idea of romantic being, you know, like uh, Beethoven's strum and drawn romantic, you know, I mean, not flowery romance romantic. Yeah, you're right, Giorno. I don't have you, um, you know, I like watching every once in a while those things about uh, where the premise is humans are dead, you know, and it shows like what it would be, you know, 10 years later and 100 years later, and like, you know, watching you know the decay of our buildings like if we just all just instantly disappeared kind of thing i watched one that was like that and it was funny to watch you know like okay concrete would probably last this long and the rebar would probably last this long and you know and cars would probably you know it's just like showing all the just you know the decay and watching well you know what it, what brings to mind is anchor watt right it's my understanding that there's a big chunks of anchor watt that even the local people had forgotten existed because the jungle had just sort of you know taken it back you know, um, so maybe I'm misunderstanding that, but I think that's kind of the case with that. Um, you know, you know, so that kind of implies what would be happening if we, you know, if we screw ourselves, right? Anyway, Luke Farabi, I am lurking, but that appeals to me so much. I love that kind of simple lifestyle, dude. Yeah, you know, there's something about the, the simplicity that I think, you know, especially because our stuff has just gotten so crazy, you know, it's just gotten so, so crazy. But the downside is, is uh, I would like us to be able to get kind of simple in that way, but I'm addicted to this tech. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be able to speak to you guys if it wasn't for the internet, right? You know what I mean? We couldn't be doing this. And I love this. This is fantastic. Um, so we got to find a way of, you know, marrying the two, right? You know, that is my fantasy. Okay, here we go. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know, the Roman times, yeah, again, you just have to, um, yeah, just make sure that you weren't anybody who would be impacted by, you know, screwed up power structures, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you know, but here's the thing, I think a lot of people were probably able to have okay lives over lots of periods of time, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know, maybe I'm being naive in that, but um, anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, you know, there's something about that kind of, um, it's like lush decay, you know what I mean? If that makes sense, yeah? Uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, there's something about it. It's like, what's that, um, uh, there's this thing in Japan, this idea, uh, I think it's called, is it wabi-sabi, is that the right phrase? It's to do with something being beautiful, but it's beautiful because there's a certain amount of, of uh, decay and wear and you know um, yeah yeah anyway anyway got a little bit of dead air I hope you guys don't mind I need to you know think of something to come up with here. Let's see, another comment says. Nice. You know, uh, was this the first Jurassic Park? I really enjoyed that one. Um, I haven't seen the other ones, but uh, I really enjoyed that one. Or maybe I have seen the other ones. Hmm. See, now my brain is playing tricks on me. Um, yeah, there's something. Cause I've been consuming movies lately on just, you know, screens around the home. Um, and uh, I haven't been to a theater in a long time. To be honest, I haven't been to a theater in the very recent history of my life because I'm uh, afraid to go sit in a movie theater because of my back. Sometimes it's hard for me to get comfortable and I don't want to be that guy that's doing the fidgety thing and then standing up and you know what I mean? It's like, ah. Um, and plus, it just I don't want to deal with the physical discomfort. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man, for joining me. Yeah, I thought that was the, the, was the right phrase. Yeah, that's some gorgeous stuff, man. I like that. I like that kind of stuff.
Well, here's a question that I, <coughs> excuse me, that just came to mind. Do any of the rest of you make your own ASMR at all? Does, where, you know, is there a channel that, you know, do any of you have channels that you would like me to amplify and say, hey, go check out their channel? Well, it doesn't even have to be ASMR. Does anybody have a channel of their own that they would like me to, you know, do a shout out to and say, hey, go check out this channel? You know, because it will stay on the video, right? I'm going to, you know, obviously leave these up to play, so, you know. That might give you, you know, a tiny amount of exposure. I mean, what's my um, subscription count? I think I'm over 20 grand now. Um, I don't know, maybe I should start being more cognizant of that stuff if I'm really going to take this seriously. So do maybe really push on the, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell for the notifications. Um, I mean, the thing is, is I, I don't really do that that much. I mean, I do that in that one intro where I just kind of do it in a goofy manner, mostly just because it amuses me to be playful in that way. Um, but I think we all kind of know it now, you know what I mean? And so I think there's enough people who are doing the thing. And um, yeah, you know, and I don't like being pushy about that kind of thing. Um, yeah, anyway, anyway, so that's, yeah, I don't know, who knows how. I mean, I clearly need to get better at, you know, marketing myself and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I don't know, it seems like, uh, it seems like I should have a pretty easy brand, right? You know, the weirdo with a long beard, right? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it seems like that should be, you know, a reasonable hook excuse me anyway um, yes I watched the moon landing in real time as a kid how is that for a thing man that was a deal man even as a kid I, I mean I was let's see it was what 68 is that right that doesn't seem right I, so I was very very young um, and I gotta look that up now my brain is uh, Okay. 69. Okay. Right. So I was almost four. Um, yeah. You know, so, I mean, my memory of it is, is you know, a child's memory. Um, so it's more emotional than uh, accurately detailed. Um, but even as a very, very young kid, you knew it was a big deal because it was a big deal. Man, that was a huge, huge, huge thing. It was fantastic. And like the, the the degree of optimism that sort of sprouted out of that is just, um, you know, here's the thing. I This is, you know, uh, I don't know how true this is or not, um, but I read a thing a while back that it indicated that there were people who had brought JFK the idea that um, the space program should actually be shared with the Soviet Union because that would be a first step in de-escalating the Cold War, right? Um, so if we did it cooperatively as opposed to a race. And it, it's my understanding of that these people that wrote this thing were right, is that uh, JFK was kind of thinking, hmm, that might be a good idea, and had even sent, you know, those unofficial feelers, you know, that everybody has when it comes to international politics. Um, and that I think it was Khrushchev, right? Um, that there was indications that it might have had traction, but nothing happened and then JF before JFK was killed and then that kind of yeah so I don't know how true that is or not um, if it is that's a shame man it's just another bad thing as a result of JFK's assassination and sometimes I think uh, maybe that could be why right maybe all these John Birch screwballs um, were like you know so you know anti-soviet that uh, they would rather kill JFK than uh, cooperate with communists you know what I mean I don't know maybe that's just me being a, oh, an asshole but um, Anyway, okay, uh, where, where, where am I at now? Um, oh, Armin, uh, the original from 1993. Okay, what would that, oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I forgot where that thread was going, Armin. Okay, yeah, Jurassic Park, right, right, right. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, wait a minute, for the hell of it, I have to go back up. I'm forgetting what that thread's about. Let me get over here and roll, scroll this up so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Come on. All right, well, I, it, yeah, I'm sorry for the hell of it. It's behaving weirdly. And uh, Anyway, um, remind me of what, what, what it is you and I were mentioning. Um, Karmatic, good morning. 1969, thanks, Space Cowboy. Um, yeah, you know, wouldn't that have been wouldn't have been a cool wouldn't have been a cool thing. Um, you know, I have fantasies about those types of things because it's like, 
again, I mean, I'm going to keep saying it because I think it's an important thing to say. Agape for all. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I mean, uh, clearly I'm not a Christian, but that's a powerful concept, and it's worth it's worth investigating, right? You know, uh, again, you know, I'll recommend people read uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's Living the Living Christ, because um, you know you don't have to believe in God to be a Buddhist, right? And I don't count myself as a Buddhist, but I my worldview is absolutely in it, uh, informed by my understanding of Buddhism, um, and you know, like a, actually the thing I think that informs my understanding of the world the most is Taoism. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very impactful. I was 13 when my mom gave me her copy of the Tao Te Ching, and that sort of changed my world, man. Um, yeah, so people ask about philosophy and philosophers. I'll get, okay, Lao Tzu. And I'm not an expert, you know, so don't, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, so yeah, uh, you know. And again, I'm not gonna say I'm an expert on Taoism, so I'm clearly a white boy taking a thing and you know incorporating what i understand from that into my own understanding you know what i'm saying um so i think that's an important thing to state right you know what i mean um anyway oh oh right the doing asmr thing okay 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 um uh yeah uh, everybody should do asmr well maybe not i don't you know i get all everybody should do everything and you know, it's like get all enthusiastic about things and it's like hey, i should just learn to relax and let people do what they need to do and have their own lives you know um, uh, okay, we did something to think about the escalation. Apollo capsule docked with her. Yeah, okay, that that's a thing, right? You know. Um, the collective God universe. So, are you thinking in terms of uh, similar to the Hindu concept of the Brahma dream, where everything is a manifestation of the ultimate mind? Uh, I think that's an appealing concept. Um, um, I like it, but see, here's the thing. Um, I'm, I view these things as descriptions. As, uh, we're doing our best uh, you know, to, to understand the universe and then come up with descriptions to provide for each other so we can have discourse, right? Um, so I'm not interested in calling any of these things some kind of ultimate reality. And here I'm gonna also borrow another concept from uh, Hinduism right now, uh, the idea of Maya, right? All of the things that we perceive as manifestations are Maya, is my understanding of that concept. Um, so, right, but yeah, th th there is a, that's an appealing way of, of, of thinking of the world. Like, uh, could it be that all of, co well, here's an idea that I've rolled around in my head, and it's just totally pseudoscience. Um, but it's, because uh, since so many things, like fundamental particles, there's this relationship for particles are this thing that has to do with the resolution of a field, right? There's a thing, that goes, choo -choo -choo, and there's the particle. Um, so could consciousness actually be a field, right? So maybe it is all one consciousness that is existing and our individual pieces of the consciousness as we experience it is because of the way our organism uh, has the capacity to interact with the field. I know that's certainly a very crazy uh, sort of pseudoscience thing, but you know, that kind of stuff, it, it appeals to me to think those things once in a while. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, anyway, so if anybody's interested, I just noticed Space Cowboy said that he has a thing about, would you mind people going to watch it? Go check him out, you know? Um, okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'd recommend watching videos of Shi Heng Yi. I mean, why Shaolin Master with interesting views on life and humans. Yeah, okay, I will uh, I will take that under advisement, Giorno. Um, um, yeah, there's another guy, I don't remember his name, maybe it's this guy, I don't know, uh, but I did see a Shaolin dude uh, a while back came up my feed and I watched him. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, you know, a lot, yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely look into this guy, thank you for the recommendation. Ethan, uh, yo, what's up? Yes, what's up to you too, man? How's it going? Hope your world is good and your existence in that world is even better, man. Um, Yeah, you know, I'm very interested in the, the whole things about uh, fungal networks and stuff. Um, it seems like there's, it seems to me there's a clear intelligence there. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, maybe I'm being, you know, a naive guy. What's that guy who's the, oh, I can't think of his name. Um, damn it, is that it? Something like that? Who's a super knowledgeable kind of expert on the fungi thing. 
Um, I've seen him talk about stuff where he's talked about the you know the wonders of fungies and things. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at? Um, Jake B. Okay. Okay, my morning routine uh, varies. Um, uh, okay, so uh, at I take a pill called gabapentin, and I take it three times a day. So being the math geek that I am, um, so I take it at six in the morning, two in the afternoon, and ten at night. So it's eight hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> Divide the day up in eight hours. So I get up to take a pill at six. Uh, actually, pills because I also take my uh, Wellbutrin and Lamotrigine at that time too. But then gabapentin is the only ones I have to take multiple times a day. Um, but so okay, so if I'm feeling good and my back's okay. Uh, I will actually get up. I will come check my emails. I play, you know, my daily round of the the various games that you guys do see me play. Um, like I always do the daily Wordle and all that kind of stuff. You know, I should try and do that. Capture just one of my daily uh, game plays. Um, I don't normally do those. Well, whatever. I'll, I'll I'll just sort that out and do that. Um, and you know, check emails and this sort of thing. Um, a lot of mornings, not every morning, but uh, at least a couple of mornings a week, I'll interact with my friend. That's the university um, professor guy over in uh, Chester um, and uh, you know sometimes you know I'll be able to actually speak with him and his wife and his child at the same time which is always delightful um, and then uh, I try to figure out what I'm going to be doing for the day if, if there are things I need to do physically around the house because our house it just needs stuff done you know what I mean it's there's a lot of people living here um, let's see there's me uh, my sister her husband my niece and her boyfriend, this guy Jarrell, who's just a, a dear family friend who lives with us, um, Tommy, who's uh, my nephew, uh, my dad, and then my other nephew, Alan. Um, so that's the people, and we've got seven dogs. Um, but uh, my parents were um, kind of sloppy, messy people, and my mom was, I don't know if I'd go so far as to call her a hoarder. Yeah, I think she was a, mo a bit of a hoarder. And so there's, uh, we have stuff and there's chaos and whatnot, and a lot of it just needs seeing too. And there's certain, the house is of a certain age, so there's a certain amount of stuff that's maintenance things that need doing. Um, and it's difficult because my dad's in his 70s um, and I have a limited capacity to do things. You know, so um, if I can, I try to help him out with that stuff. Uh, if I can't, you know, well, well, it is what it is. And then lately, uh, my schedule is to try to plan out what I'm gonna do with music and ASMR. If I'm going to be doing any recording or if I'm going to be doing any composing of music or that kind of thing and then I have to set my day up uh, I've been trying to get back into doing um, exercises and stuff anyway so that's kind of the start of my day and then all of those decisions play out as to how the rest of my day goes um, yeah I hope that gives you a, a kind of an idea about what 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 what's going on in my world in that regard um, okay where am I at here with comments uh, okay angel hi first time Oh, wait a minute, I think, I think I missed something here. Let me go back over here, scroll a bit, see if I can get this to work properly. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Okay, there's a, uh, okay, yeah, Space Cowboy's fine with everybody checking out. Go check them out, man, give them some love. You know, that's a good part of the community, right? We can be supportful and kind to each other. That's the groovy, groovy, groovy thing. Yeah, anyway, uh, we are one, guy I sells our body, we zoomed out of, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. You know, karmatic, yeah, I mean, the, la I hope you're laughing out of joy and not out of uh, uh, mocking. Um, have you ever heard uh, Alan Watts, he does a speech or a lecture where he talks about how um, that uh, in the West we view ourselves very different. Um, in the East there's kind of a thing, they see it as, as more naturally as we grow out of the world, right? You know what I mean? And there's something about that idea, because we do, right? I mean, it's like if you trace everything back it goes back to things like well fungi and small organisms and they digest things and then a thing up from them you know the whole food web thing right you know what i mean um the life lives as a film on the surface of this giant globe that provides us you know what i mean it's like a, 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 like an apple tree apples right that's the thing out of uh, alan watts's lecture and so um uh, among the many things that the earth does is it peoples you know what i mean <laughs> How's that for a groovy thing? I love that. Um, and okay, so Angel, uh, first time commenter, long time viewer. Thanks for being here, man. Um, right on. Uh, good, Diego. I'm glad you're digging it. I hope it's a, a it's you know meets your expectations. Um, 
Um, you know, the time in Utrecht, I, let me jump, make sure I get all these contracts or co comments, not contracts. Um, and because, you know, I get these lull spots. So the next time a lull spot comes, um, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about Utrecht. And uh, okay, anyway, so uh, bah, 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 where am I at now? Okay, thoughts on prog rock? Um, yeah, um, yes, I absolutely love yes. Um, Fragile and Close to the Edge, I think, are two very significant al albums when it comes to you know anything that you're going to put rock on, whether it's prog or not. Those are just powerful, powerful albums. Um, uh, I also, I'm going to throw uh, Jethro Tull into that bin too. I like the album A Passion Play. That's my favorite Jethro Tull album. Um, it's not a terribly popular one, I don't think. Uh, I happen to think it's, it's, well, it's their best one in my mind. Um, um, some people put Pink Floyd into the prog rock bin. Uh, I'm fine with that, but Pink Floyd is one of my, I think they're one of the best rock bands to ever, you know, exist. Um, I mean, for me, I enjoy them. Yeah, they're just, and David Gilmour is a guitarist. He has such power in his, in his, like he puts notes where they need to go. You know what I mean? He just puts notes where they need to go. It's just amazing how he can do that. Anyway, so yeah, prog rock is fine. I don't know a lot about uh, modern prog. I guess uh, that would be like Dream Theater. Um, I have been exposed to them, but um, I haven't really followed them in depth. So like a lot of new prog, I'm, um, I'm a total uh, novice, newbie, whatever you want to say. Um, so if you have any good recommendations on any specific material that I might, you know, YouTube search and be able to watch an official video of or whatever, um, that would be cool. I, I'd be absolutely into that, you know. Um, Oh, about the falling out. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, I'll I'll try to get into that a little bit. Okay, but, 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 but okay, here we go. Um, okay, so fake mm, remote gene now has been both was on Gabba Pet and Emma Newton last year. Uh, uh, yeah, isn't it for me that that that's that's the recipe for me, man. Well, butrin, uh, Gabba Pet and remote uh, My life is. It's like uh, I was talking to my psychiatrist, like, oh, you know, I, I know I've heard this before and it's almost cliche, but it's like, is this what it's been like for other people the whole time? You know what I mean? Have I been that far off base that holy mackerel? You know what I mean? Yikes. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm here now, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, wait a minute, do I hang out often oh you, do you mean with the people in the UK as far as uh, online um, it's great it's fantastic um, I love being able to use technology to um, oh man I've got to stop slouching um, I love being able to use technology to, oh, I already have it done all the way um, yeah that you know that's one of the best uses yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah, groovy, man. Karmatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. That means you have a good heart, you know? Um, it people. Yeah, right on. The zeitgeist. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, zeitgeist, right? You know, ich trete nur ein bisschen Deutsch. I took a lot of it in school. Took a year in junior. I said this last night. I took a year in junior high, uh, three years in high school, and I think two semesters in college. And for a while, I was actually pretty good. Uh, like, I could watch Das Boot in German. You know what I mean? It would be fine. Um, and I could carry on minimal conversation. And even as recently as back when I was in Utrecht, I did bump into a girl that I ended up spending the night with who didn't speak English. She only spoke uh, German and Dutch. And I don't, I, well, I had broken German. Anyway, well, we managed to communicate well enough that she came home and we spent the night together. <laughs> so, I mean, but I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's just silly. But whatever. Yeah, so my German is weak as fuck. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, the band Ace. I'm drawn a blank. I don't believe I have. Um, okay, I'll have to look into that. So no, no, Space Cowboy, I don't think. It doesn't ring a bell with me right now. Yeah, isn't it close to the edge, Armin? Yeah, that's just, man. You know, if you guys, well, here's the thing. Um, you can, YouTube has it, you know. Uh, one thing I like to do, uh, you know, if, if you do know the material, there's this guy, man, I wish I could remember his name. Um, he's a metalhead. 
but he did a reaction video to Close to the Edge. And it was absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean? It was almost like, you know, that thing where, um, uh, where you put a record on for your friend and go, oh, hey, listen to this. You know what I mean? It's really great. You're going to dig it. You know what I mean? I kind of got that experience watching him, you know, kind of go, wow, and see him kind of realize what was going on. And, and he's, you know, he's a metalhead, but he has, he's a good, he has a good sense of music appreciation. You know what I mean? He could understand what was going on and, and see how the parts interplayed. And, you know what I mean? It was really, really groovy to watch him do that. Um, do I think Sokoban is on the table? Those were some of my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, ah, wow. Live Sokoban. Interesting. You know, I might consider that. I might consider that. I had not. But yeah, okay, that, that you know. Um, yeah. Okay, so Jarrett Coyle, he's a co-worker who sits down and watches the KEXP performances of Tiny Desk and... Okay, so Mandu Mokhtar and Alton, I'm going to say Jin. Um, I don't know those. <coughs> I will, uh, if I remember, I'll, I have to remember to come back in the comments because people have made several recommendations about like things like movies and bands and things. I have to make sure I go collect that back up. Oh, yes, as far as progressive rock, King Crimson. Yeah, Robert Fripp is a big influence on me as a guitarist. Um, I think if you go to the uh, Three Monks in a Tub channel, um, uh, there's, uh, especially if you see, um, well, one is kind of just sloppy and messy. It's, uh, I think it's called Wandering Noodling, um, but probably more apparent in a thing called Thinking About a Girl. Um, and I'm really super proud of that. I had some ideas about what it would be, and it was a looper thing. But that was completely improvised, you know what I mean, off the top of my head. So that's like in real time composing that happened on Thinking About a Girl. Um, but I think you, I think it would certainly, you'll be able to see the Fripp influence in that. Um, but yeah, King Crimson is fantastic. And well, it's clearly Fripp's band, isn't it? I mean, he's been the, I mean, even like in the, 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 the version where uh, Adrian Blue was, you know, kind of resting a certain amount of the, the guitar hero whatever status, you know, out of, uh, you know, Fripp for it to exist there. But it's always been clearly Fripp's band. Um, it's his little universe. Um, oh, and I don't know if, if have any of you seen the, uh, if, if you like King Crimson, there's a, a, a little thing I've seen, I saw it on YouTube, is him talking about um, that, uh, well, he had met Hendrix and it was kind of a good experience, but then, um, Hendrix went and saw his band, and then somebody told him that Hendrix had said some really, really good things about King Crimson, that it was like the best band he had seen in, you know, some kind of context or whatever. And a, a Fripp said, you know, that's a pretty nice calling card, isn't it? You know what I mean? To have, like, Hendrix go, yeah, this is one of the best bands I've seen. You know, that's, that's something. You know what I mean? Because Hendrix was, he was, he was a different kind of human <laughs> when it came to music, man. He, he was differently doing, so he, he was doing some stuff, man. Um... Okay, so let's see, where are we at now? Da, 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 King Crimson. Um, yeah, yes, I do listen, yes. Um, Gong, not so much, but uh, yeah. Um, um, I'm not a fan of Rush. I do enjoy their stuff, but they don't really um, strike my heart very much. You know what I mean? I can enjoy them as in their musicianship, and, and I can be in the moment, kind of go, yeah, this is rocking and that kind of thing, but not to the place that, like, I never went and saw them live or anything like that. Um, I've never seen King Crimson live, although... When I was living in San Diego, they came to San Diego. I didn't have the money to get in, um, but they played at the, this open air theater that was at, at San Diego State, and um, you could sit outside and still hear reasonably well what was going on. You just couldn't see what was up. Um, yeah. All right, so this is a little bit of a lull, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking a little bit about Utrecht. Okay, so I have to back up before I talk about Utrecht, and I have to talk about uh, San Diego for a minute, because I. For a while, I worked for this company that was called Art Ventures West, and the company was created to support this artist uh, and um, uh, it, it, like materially support him in, in uh, so he could do his work. Um, and there were several of us <coughs> that we. Um, hang on, my throat's getting dry. His name was Max Springer. Uh, he, I don't think he ever really got famous or anything like that, but. Um, that's his name. If you want to try and search his work, I don't know, you know, how much you might be able to find or not. Um, okay, so he had uh, he lived in this uh, Pacific Beach, La Jolla border kind of area, and uh, they had this really fantastic home. 
uh, but uh, what was the garage got turned into a wood shop because he painted on wood panels. Um, some of them were uh, just large rectangular things. Well, actually rectangular things. Some of them were small, some of them were large. Um, but, <clears throat> and those were fine. We made those for him. He was really prolific, so there's the thing. It was, you know, we had to, you know, keep, literally keep up with him. Um, and, uh, but the, the other thing that uh, um, was the time-consuming stuff is he made these paintings that were these odd shapes. And um, most of them were these weird, kind of almost abstract shapes. They were still figurative, but kind of weirdly rounded and odd. Um, pictures of men autofillating. Um, but you never, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, pornographic in any sense, right? You know, I mean, you'd have to kind of look at it and go, oh, is that what's going on there? I mean, that kind of thing. But they were these large panels. And um, we assembled all of the panels were made out of door materials, like if you were gonna make a custom door. So like lumber corn door skins. And uh, so we would either assemble the rectangles or we would make the other panels and then carve them into the appropriate shapes. And then he would paint them. Anyway, so I did that work for him for a while. And then he decided he didn't like being in California. He wanted to move to the Netherlands, so he did. Unfortunately, I was married, and I wasn't chosen among the people who got to go with them when they moved the company. Um, so yeah, sad for me, but um, <clears throat> anyway, a few years later, this would be um, 92, uh, my wife decided she didn't like being married to me anymore, so we separated. Um, and at first, it wasn't necessarily going for a divorce, it was just a separation. And then so this guy, Max, called me up, and he said, hey, one of the guys has left. Um, do you think you could come over at least just for a short time to fill in and I'll pay, you know, to get you here and I'll put you up and, you know, this kind of, because, uh, and I'll get to how the putting up part worked in a minute. Um, anyway, so uh, I called my wife um, and said, hey, I'm going to the Netherlands because if we're going to be separated, we're going to be separated, right? I'm going to go to the Netherlands. I'm going to be there for three months. Um, and, she, you know, that, like, so that would give you time to whatever this is that you need to do. Um, anyway, so that was the first time I went. And so um, he had uh, this building that uh, they purchased, and the bottom was what he called the atelier, right? But it was a, basically a shop, like a storefront shop. But he'd turned it in again to a shop shop. Um, it was like you didn't get to see what was going on inside. Um, but so part of it, we had uh, we didn't really make the panels in the same way anymore because he was trying to move uh, into doing some digital work uh, a little bit more than the other stuff. Um, but we, you know, he still did some painting and stuff, but it was, it was uh, like he was starting to you know, use simpler materials so we didn't have to do the big giant you know, panels that were made into the odd shapes. Anyway, so he had the atelier, uh, or the shop, um, and then uh, the, the floor just above that, was there was a flat, and that's where I got to stay. And then there was a flat above that, which they sublet out to somebody else. And then there was stuff above that, and that's where Max actually lived. And then there was an attic and stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's where I got to stay. So I got paid and I got uh, a place to live as part of my um, compensation. Um, and so the first time I was only there for three months and it was fantastic. Um, it was really, really fantastic. Um, anyway, but you know, I went home and then, uh, well, then my marriage completely fell apart and then, you know, then my life went in other ways and whatnot. Um, and then in 98, I had finished uh, my coursework at San Francisco State for my bachelor's in math. However, I didn't, I applied for graduation, but I screwed up uh, parts of the application. I won't go into the details of that. It's just silly and bureaucratic boring. But so I didn't get prof of the degree. Uh, so I, I, you know, I've earned a bachelor's, but I don't have a bachelor's. Um, anyway, um, anyway, so he called me like right after that and said, okay, um, the, the uh, other guy that was there because um, he was down to just one other person helping him at this point because uh, he was really streamlining and really trying to move into the digital realm thing. And um, anyway, that guy decided he, went, he needed to come back to California for a while. He was tired of living in the Netherlands. Um, and so he said, hey, uh, what, what would you think about coming back here for a while? And so we talked about that and talked about that. And it, it was like the idea would be I would come and stay there permanently. So the idea was I would come and stay. I could be there for three months just on my passport. And then after that, I could go speak to the authorities in the Netherlands and say, I have a job, I want to stay. And it was really just a matter of bureaucracy that they could make that work. And so that was the plan, right, that I would do that whole thing and actually just, you know, uh, have an immigration card or whatever it is they do in the Netherlands. Um, 
and so that was kind of the you know the, the trajectory that we had planned um, anyway okay so I was there working and he started becoming a little unhinged emotionally right you know what I mean and it was like dude what's going on with you right this kind of thing um, and um, he had keys to the flat because it had uh, laundry stuff like a washing machine and that kind of thing um, which is fine I didn't mind you know, as long as he you know like there was part of the flat that was like kind of privately mine you know I mean? so yeah I used the common area which is what you know the way I thought of it the living room and where the washing room was and the, the kitchen space in the flat I was in was better than his kitchen space so we shared some kitchen storage and that kind of thing um, and I think Parsi he also just liked having his nose in the flat frankly um, Anyway, but he started invading my space. You know what I mean? And at first, it was just like a nuisance. And then, he, like, I would, like, I would wake up, and he would be doing this weird thing. And it was like, "What are you doing?" He was like, "I'd be like, I'd crashed on the couch or something, right?" And I'd wake up, and there he'd be like standing over me, and he'd be muttering stuff. And he was like, "Oh, it's neurolinguistic programming. I'm trying." And I was like, "Dude, what are you? What? What? What is going on with you, man?" It was like just these weird, weird invasions, and they really started getting a little more. I don't know, just unhinged in my, you know, my emotional interpretation of the situation. Um, and while this was also going on, there was a, a place I used to hang out with that was down the street from us on Prairie Karenstraat that was called La View. And it was these Turkish dudes that ran this bar. And I don't have proof, but I think they were drug dealers. Um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say things like that because maybe it's, you know, maybe the bar is still there and whatnot. So, you know, this is just me being an idiot. Um, but. There, 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 there was a vibe there, right? And there were some guys there that were, um, you wouldn't really want to mess with them kind of thing, like the door guy and stuff. Anyway, Mac, I used to go down there all the time, and I really got quite friendly with the people who ran it, and uh, one girl, um, Brigitte, that was uh, one of the um, uh, bartenders. Um, anyway, so you know, I had some friends down there, because you know, I would go down there pretty frequently. Um, anyway, he started coming down with me, um, but he started being a jerk there, and he got 86 a couple of times, like 86 just instantly for the day. But then it came down, they didn't want him back at all. And um, he kept trying to come back. And they came to me finally and said, you need to explain to him he can't come here or else I'm going to 86 you too. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yikes, because that's how bad he got. Um, and so I was like trying to have these conversations with him. And then he started becoming really unhinged, where I was fearful that, you know, he might sneak in and harm me in my sleep, that kind of thing. That's, I felt that unsecure there. So I actually fled. I left. I left him a note saying, I'm leaving. This is ridiculous. I didn't even have a conversation with him. It got so bad. I said, I'm leaving. This is ridiculous. I can't. This is inhabitable for me, or not inhabitable for me. Um, and so then, uh, and I had very little money at the time, and my plane ticket was not, I couldn't switch it. Um, because when I bought the plane ticket, right, because, you know, I had to be there on my three months, my visa. So the plane ticket I bought, had to be a return trip. I don't remember all the fucking bureaucratic things about it, but so my plane ticket um, uh, was an untransferable thing, but it was the, the only thing I could do. Um, and uh, at first I was just gonna eat it, right? Cause I was gonna be staying there. And I thought, all right, I'll, it's a couple hundred or a few hundred bucks to, you know, I'll, I'll just won't get back on that plane ticket, but I figured it would be worth it cause I was gonna be staying in the Netherlands, but I was glad to have it. You know, it was like, okay, I'm not staying in the Netherlands. Um, Anyway, so I had the plane ticket, but I couldn't switch the, the, the date, and it was like almost a month away still. So I'd only really been there like for the first couple of months. Um, and then, so I remembered I have this friend, Steve, that lives uh, over in the UK. He was uh, living in South Sea teaching over there. Um, and uh, anyway, so I tried getting a hold of him on phone. Now this is in 98, so there wasn't, communications was not what it is today. Um, so I fled the Netherlands on my way to South Sea without for sure having a place to stay because he didn't answer. I, I didn't even know where he was. I didn't know where he was home. He could have been on vacation. You know, I didn't know anything. Uh, and it turned out he was on vacation because this was summer uh, and he's a teacher and his parents were down visiting him. They were uh, Lancastrians. Um, and uh, anyway, but they had been out um, and it just happened that they were returning to his house and they got the message and they were able to, you know, scoop me up at the train station and then his mom was adorable. She actually just said, okay, you, you know, come here, we'll take care of you, blah, blah, blah. And she was really nice because she realized that, you know, it was a stressful thing that I was fleeing and all of that. And so she was really, really groovy for me. Um, so there's the basic gist of, uh, um, you know, my uh, leaving the Netherlands. Um, yeah. Anyway. Okay, so let me, if I missed any. 
um, other comments. Uh, da -da -da -da. Did I ever like Prince? Yeah, Prince is all right. Um, what do I think happens after life? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea, so I'm not even going to bother speculating. Um, sorry if that disappoints you, but yeah, I just like, ah, you know, I don't know. It could be that nothing happens. It could be that something that is beyond our imagination happens. I have absolutely no idea. Um, uh, Turby, hi from Ireland. Unfortunately, I can't stay. Watch now. Da -da 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 -da. Um, alphabet is. Oh, I'm glad you like that one. Um, you know, I'm going to see if I could, because I'm not consistently good at tapping. I'm going to see if I can practice that and get good at it, right? I'll try to think of it as a musical thing. Um, yeah, thoughts on Frank Zappa? I like a lot of Frank Zappa stuff, especially his, uh, like, Hot Rats is fantastic. Um, I like the album uh, You Are What You Is. It's I know a lot of people, are, it's like, find it a little problematic, but I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's all right. Uh, the music is fantastic. He's, he's a fantastic composer. Oh, Catherine Simmons is my sister. And, oh, yeah, of course you would remember it. <laughs> How would you not remember it? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a whirlwind, Karmatic. Absolutely. Okay, so the highlights were uh, the people. The people were fantastic. And then just the overall culture. I love the Netherlands. I would like to go, you know, like I said, I'd like to be able to be in Europe. You know, like if I was uber rich, I'd, you know, have an apartment over there, either in uh, South Sea or, you know, maybe Utrecht. Because I really liked Utrecht a lot. Um, what, I'm going to see if I can remember the Odegrak. Is that even close to right? You know, I used to go walk along that quite a bit. Um, and there was just, I liked the idea of small shops. Like you could just go into a sandwich shop and whatever, and you could get, you know, like bakeries and things, you know, just stuff that you could get stuff at small. I just liked the walkability of it. You know what I mean? And then uh, market days and stuff like that is just fantastic. Uh, while I was there, I also saw some, uh, I don't remember any of the names of the bands, uh, but I went several times. Uh, most of them were sort of uh, kind of industrial in nature. Um, um, a little bit more kind of I think uh, Einsch Dezinder more than like Nine Inch Nails you know what I'm saying um, Einsch Dezinder Neubotten that kind of thing um, uh, but at this place called the Milk Veg um, yeah we went there a few times I really liked that place I went to this place in Amsterdam called the Empire Bar um, actually I went there one night on a, uh, they were having a fetish night and I didn't know that and Max did um, so he was kind of, he got all decked up in his leather stuff and, you know, had a big leather coat so he could hide, you know, his stuff underneath because uh, he was into that kind of bit stuff. He's, you know, kind of mildly into S&M and that sort. Um, but, you know, he let me show up ignorant. But here's the thing. They didn't want to let me in because it was fetish night. Everybody had to be in fetish garb. And I was like, man, I really want to come in because I had friends in there. And uh, especially a couple of the bartenders I'd got to know really well. And I wanted to be able to hang out with them. And so the door guy's like, being, you know, kind of a smart ass, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll let you in if you drop trow and you have to keep it down the whole night you're in. I said, all right. So I spent the night with my pants around my knees and sitting at the bar, you know. <laughs> How's that for a thing? Um, Matt, any advice for a guitar player who's feeling kind of stuck? I enjoy writing riffs and jam, but it's difficult for me to learn a song for start to finish or record it fulls. Okay, so here's the thing. I can play almost nobody else's material. Um, the last time I played anybody else's material, uh, well, except for people I was in bands with, right? I, I'll make that caveat. But, you know, somebody from like a, a composer that I didn't know personally was when I took this course in jazz uh, improvisation and the teacher handed out charts and just kind of threw us into the deep end. Um, and I still have some of those charts around somewhere, but I mean, I can't read for shit, frankly. Um, you know, but I can follow chords and I can, you know, that kind of thing. And of course, when I got my turn, because we, we did it, it's like there was a head and then everybody got their turn, you know, through this through the cycle. Um, that was a fun class take. But that's the last time I really played anybody else's material, really. Um, uh, so what, about, what would be my advice? Well, make sure that you play, like play a lot, even if it's your own material and your riffs and whatever. Um, like get, uh, I, I hope you have a DAW or a looper or something so you can jam with yourself, um, you know. And try to play with as many people as you can just even if it's just relaxed doing you know blues and a you know what i mean just to make sure you have your hands on the instrument um that's the best thing i can tell you to do and then um yeah just yeah you know just play i mean that's the only way i know out of funks is to play and i don't mean funk in the, you know the funky cool way i mean funk like uh you know kind of whatever um 
Oh yeah, there's my dad as G Postman. Um, yeah, I mean, I imagine it was frustrating for you because it was a rough time for me. You know, I mean, I know you guys were aware of it because I remember calling, and I'm pretty sure wasn't one of the times you and I were on the phone. Max came in and threw one of his screwball tantrums. Right? Is that am I not remembering that right, or was on the phone with Steve? I'm pretty sure that, that happened. You know, multiple times. I'm pretty sure one of the times it happened is when you were on the phone with me. Um, and it was man, what a not so you know, dad can be a witness to that. Um, anyway. Um, okay, so for when I'm feeling low uh, and insecure about relationships, um, okay, two things. Um, I have a meditation practice, so I lean on that. Um, but I also have uh, a very close-knit family. We're, we're a very close-knit family. Um, and so I have my family to lean on, too. Um, Otherwise, if this is going to sound silly, but I like watching those uh, videos from that channel Dodo about animals getting rescued and animals doing darling things. I mean, it's, you know, and here's another thing I like to do in, when I have short moments of just like something bugging me or I'm getting pissed off or I'll let something in politics piss me off. I have to find a way of cultivating more compassion, you know what I mean, not letting that stuff bug me. But anyway, when I'm in those throes of that kind of turmoil, you know, emotionally, I go spend time with the dogs. You know, I'll sit on the couch and just, you know, let the pit bulls come sit on me and get the other dogs. They all want to, they all want to be on Uncle Bill. I become like the hill that they all want to be king of the hill on, you know what I mean? But it's like, it does me a world of good. Absolutely does me a world of good. Um, so, I mean, those are the things I can suggest, Mercury. I hope that gives you any modicum of anything useful. Uh, let's see, I'm in 27. Lumpy gravy, we're only in it for the money, apostrophe and chic beer booty are my phase. Um, yeah, Sheikra Beauty is a good one, isn't it? That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Um, oh, okay, there you go. Um, you know, if, if you'll hold on, I told, oh, I'm already late. I said I was going to end at 11. Um, so, I'll, you know, I'm going to end in 10 minutes, 1130. And if you're up for it, Kat, I'll come up and uh, we can have a little bit of coffee then. Um, you know, it, I, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, you know, if, you, if that's cool with you, let's just sort that out in a little bit. Um, Space Cowboy, you're back, right on, you know, you're just for the last 10 minutes. Um, right, you see, I, yeah, you did send me money, didn't you? That's how I was able to afford to get over to Steve, because I had, Max owed me money. That was the problem, or part of the problem, another part of the problem. Uh, oh, my is one of the dogs, if you saw my dad's comment. Um, she's one of the pit bulls. You know, I'm going to have to uh, film some video of the dogs so I can put into, a, you know, just a video for you guys to see because they're adorable and I love them. Um, Captain Crispy, well, you're here just in time to see the end of it. Um, yeah, I'm glad you're, you're digging what I'm doing, um, you know, and it, it is my intent to keep it going. You know what I mean? Uh, now that I'm in a better headspace, um, I've been, I know I've been kind of, still kind of bouncing between like skipping weeks of putting stuff out and stuff like that. That's because I'm trying to put energy into my music and get a workflow there too. But you know, ultimately it will get balanced and I'll be steady about, uh, I want to put out at least an ASMR video a week, at least. Um, so, uh, you know, um, and I, I need to get working on those uh, story time ones too, because I really want to finish doing all of the stories in Dubliners. Um, but anyway, yeah, I want to, I want to maintain this and then put stuff, stuff into my music channel. I'm going to not put a lot of effort into the WC Postman, that's me ranting about stuff channel. I mean, I will occasionally drop stuff in there, but I've come to realize that music and ASMR is where my heart is as an artist, you know, and I need to be who I am. I have to be an artist, you know what I mean? I'm not a political commentator. I'm not an activist. I'm just not, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I realize that, the, you know, the world would be better if there was more people being active, but um, I need to be an artist, you know what I mean? That's, that's my thing. Um, anyway. Yeah, of course, yay, cat. Right on. Oh, ah, uh, sorry about that, man. Um, Chris, Captain Crispy, um, Carmack, thanks for the stream. It'll be nice to hear about your life and feel your point scratch. Yeah, dude, I've had a very strange life, man. I've like I've had lots of jobs. I've you know I, you know mostly California guy, um, um, but yeah, um, yeah. So you know, I'll try to figure out a way of sharing some of that stuff without sharing anything I feel, you know, too uh, tender about or something, you know what I mean? Um, uh, 
Uh, Mercury. Yeah, you know, there's the thing. I'm, tr I'm still figuring that out. Um, I, people, a couple of people have asked me about having a Patreon um, and that kind of thing. Um, see, the thing is, I want everything to be for everybody. So I might do some kind of Patreon, but I think I'll, if I do it, it'll be structured more like a tip jar. You know what I mean? There's the thing. Here's my fantasy. My fantasy is to get, I think I've said this before, is to get like some ginormous amount of subscribers, you know, like, you know, hundreds of thousands kind of thing to where uh, some fraction of them, let's say, you know, 100,000 people like me enough to give me a dollar a year. You know what I mean? There's my fantasy. Because um, then I could have a very comfortable life. I could do the things I need to do. I could do things for my family. You know what I mean? Uh, my main, I don't want to be a burden on anybody, frankly. I want to be able to make beautiful things and give them to the world. And then I just need to figure out a way of making my life so that I can materially exist in it, you know? And I'd like to be able to contribute, you know, not just for my own material existence, but again, for my sister and my dad. And there's also, there's causes, right? You know what I mean? There's things that need, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you guys ever watch um, uh, 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 Bo the Fifth Column. Um, I like him a lot. Um, but he often talks about, like just recently, he did a thing about uh, the um, auto workers thing. And, uh, you know, people, you know, if you're so inclined, you know, he said people could contribute to the, the strike fund which if these people need support, man. I firmly believe that we need to focus on supporting labor, absolutely. Um, you know, so if I had spare money, I would put it in causes like that, you know? Uh, anyway, so there's my fantasy. Um, okay, I need to scroll up, I missed comments. And it's coming up on 11.30, so I'm probably gonna end up hanging over a little bit just because I wanna catch all these comments. Okay, where are we at now? Yeah, Kat, I do. Uh, my plan is to do them once a month. I'm going to do this multiple time zone thing um, once a month, I think. Uh, at least, yeah, that's, that's, what I'm, that's, that's my plan. That's what, we're, that's what I'm going to plan to do. Um, uh, I just wanted to stop and let you know that I've been watching. Right on, man. That means you've been here since the beginning. Right on, level 99. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. I appreciate the support. Pilot Bill. Hey, another Bill. Right on. Please do another geography one when you have time. Um, you know, I, I actually, I need to do that, don't I? I've kind of let that fall by the wayside. I need to get back on that because my goal is to, uh, well, here's my, my goal. I need to get back on that because I want to be able to pick up a, a blank globe map kind of thing and be able to name every country just, just that and then name all the capitals and place them within reason to where they are within those countries. That's my goal with that. I mean, not that it has any real, you know, practical use for me in that regard, but um, somehow I feel like it's being respectful to people, you know? Is that a weird thing? Oh, yeah, they can send super chess. Here's the thing, dude. You, um, I'm not, I don't like, it's there, it's available, right? You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's as far as I want to go. I don't want to be badgering you guys, right? You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I just don't. I want to be able to, you know, and again, eh, whatever. I have to figure out how to balance that, you know what I mean? Because of my need and desire for material, whatever and um, being able to give you guys, you know, what I can give you. You know what I mean? I have to figure out how to make that work. That's my struggle in the moment. Uh, Jonathan Franzen. Okay, so that's a callback to a previous thing. Yeah, Kim Novak, man. Um, yeah, 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 she's it's just, you know, I realize that's sort of, you know, maybe a dated aesthetic for some people. Um, but yeah, Kim Novak, uh, Grace Kelly, um, I, you know, there you go. Those are the, two, for me, those are the two women I have a big crush on. Um, oh, uh, another woman I have a big crush on, although I haven't seen her in a long time, so I don't know where she's at, but say back in the 90s, Toni Braxton, I had a huge crush on her. Especially there's this one video where she's in this white kind of body jumpsuit thing. Yikes. I was just, I was very distracted in a, an erotic manner. It was difficult for me to even focus on her singing. Anyway. Um, Okay, so you like the WC Postman channel, Karmatic, yeah. Um, yeah, see, here's the thing. I'm going to use it as a cathartic thing, and then, you know, you know that's, that's really what, I, what I'm going to do, though. Um, yeah, there's the thing. I kind of tend to just be me, and I'm a kind of mellow guy, but so, yeah, yeah, I'll have to get more amped up when I do that one. Um, thanks, Karmatic, yeah, you know. Yeah, here's the thing. If you guys could be patient with me, right? We'll, we'll, it'll get worked out, right? We'll have a beautiful community here um, that hopefully can expand even to, maybe some of you will even decide to, uh, you know, like, well, Space Cowboys, he's not necessarily an ASMR channel, but go check his thing out. Um, 
like I, I, you know, I'd like us to be able to, uh, you know, do a thing for all of us, right? You know, yeah, I, I, yeah, there's me, and you, you know that, right? That's the thing. I'll just keep saying it all the time, but yeah. Um, Sequoia, yes, I've been to Sequoia, absolutely. Um, man, those trees are. Here's the thing: if anybody is going to be doing a tourist thing in California, and you don't put Sequoia on your on your thing, you're making a mistake. Sequoia and Yosemite, man. Man, man, man. So it's like we're lucky in California in that regard. We have some very beautiful things around here. And those two are just absolute highlights. Absolute highlights. Well, thanks, Mercury. I appreciate that. Okay, so hang on. Let me get back to that. So where is this at over here? So... Um, you know, North by Northwest is among my faves. Um, See, here's the thing. I have. It's hard for me to pinpoint faves because it's always a moving target for me. I would say the most frequently thing I would call my favorite Hitchcock is uh, To Catch a Thief. Just because the, the thing between Cary Grant and uh, Grace Kelly, it's it's a thing, isn't it? I mean, at least for me, that's a, there's some things going on there. Yeah, that's a really, I like that one a lot. Um, and let's see, Nicole Kidman in Eyes Wide Shut reminds me of Novak from the Virgo. I haven't seen Eyes Wide Shut. I should see that. I think I started watching it and then I think I was in a bad headspace and I couldn't get into it. And so I set it aside and then never went back to it. I think it was on Netflix when, I, when that was happening. Um, my sister says, yeah, Rear Window is another good one, right? Again, Grace Kelly, right? She's fantastic. She's a really good actress, I believe. And uh, she, her chemistry with uh, Jimmy Stewart and that is also... It's not the same kind of erotic intensity, you know, as it is with a Cary Grant and To Catch a Thief, but it doesn't suit the plot to be as, as intense in that manner. Although she does show up with the little you know, overnight bag, doesn't she? That kind of, you know, that's, yeah, but it has a different vibe because Jimmy Stewart's a different guy. He's not, he's not that prowling athletic guy. I mean, because Cary Grant, like he used to be an acrobat, right? So he's carried that way of moving. He just had a way of moving that was beautiful, you know? It's like, he, you know, uh, he was a beautiful man. It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, there you go. Um, so Pilot Bill, got to run. Uh, catch you. Yeah, okay, right on. Um, and then... Uh, and what did you say, Dad? Diamonds? Oh, oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. When she's leaning forward with the necklace. That, and then the fireworks. That whole scene is just... I mean, that just... It just oozes, just like yikes! It's just man, I love that bit. Um, yeah, Twelve Angry Men is a fantastic movie, right? Absolutely. Quarterback. Yeah, he did, doesn't he? He looked like the that 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 like the idealistic quarterback. You know what I mean? That's the guy that's got the you know. Not only is he the good quarterback, but he's he's a good guy, and all the girls like him. You know what I mean? He's just that. He just yeah, and in in that. Given a good director, man, he does good work. I mean, I think he's a good actor anyway, but like when he's working with, say, like Hitchcock, man, that's good work. That's really, really good work. I love that. Anyway, okay, it's uh, 1131, so I'm going to say, um, yeah, I'm going to say that, uh, that this is a done thing, you guys. So uh, thanks for coming by. I, I love you guys. I appreciate you hanging out. This is fantastic. Uh, let's see, this is the 17th so I think what I'm going to do is the weekend that's the middle of the month you know what I mean so whatever weekend is closest to the 15th is going to be when I'm going to try and do these things you know what I mean so um yeah so uh oc middle of October man let's 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 do that I'll see you guys then and I'll try and keep you know putting the stuff out you know um there you go right on I love you guys I'll see you next time aloha <laughs>